On today's Pardon My Take, Jake the Snake Plumber, all-time guy, quarterback for the Cardinals, the Broncos, almost won a national title with Arizona State, and now Mushroom Farmer. We go to his mushroom farm. You're going to want to watch this on YouTube because we literally are sitting in a mushroom farm cooler. Uh, we have a great interview with him about his career, life after football, Pat Tillman, ton of stuff covered. We also have Grit Week Wednesday, so we're halfway through Grit Week. We talk about everything we did. We have hard knocks to recap, some stuff going on in the sports world, hot seat, cool throne, and then we finish off with the Mount Rushmore of universally loved things. Great, great show coming up, and we are brought to you by our, our wonderful sponsor, Coors Light. Summer is full of official events like weddings, graduations, and annual 4th of July barbecues, but Everyone knows the best parts of summer are the unofficial ones. This summer, Coors Light is the official beer of everything unofficial, celebrating those moments that truly make summer chill. What summer activity or unofficial activity are you most looking forward to, Billy? I'm looking forward to playing sports in the sun. Okay. We also Good. would have accepted the beach. On. Billy we said getting dunked yeah, on. Yeah, we, we would have accepted the beach, but that's fine. That's a good answer. There's only one beer out there that's literally made a chill, and that's Coors Light. The mouth on the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold. That way you always know when it's time to chill. Summer chill starts with Coors Light. Make the most of your summer with a chance to win exclusive chill merch, fun local experiences, even a trip to New York, Chicago, or L.A. Enter to win at CoorsLight.com slash take. No purchase necessary. Sweepstakes ends 8-15-2022. Game ends 9-6-2022. 50 U.S. states and DC 21 plus only void where prohibited for rules visit CoorsLightSummer.com celebrate responsibly Coors Brewing Company Golden Colorado thank you to Coors Light we had a great time at the Coors uh, factory in Golden Colorado they're our favorite sponsor and we love Coors Light we've been drinking it all week okay let's go Welcome to Part of My Take, presented by Coors Light, our favorite sponsor, the best beer ever created. We went and visited the Coors factory in Golden, Colorado. It was delicious. It was delicious. Today is Wednesday, August 10th, and football is back. Officially back. I would like to issue a challenge <laughs> right now. If there's anybody out there that does have one ass cheek and three toes, mm -hmm. I will beat the fuck out of you. Yes. I will kick your ass. I want that person's name. Rough and rowdy, me and you. I'll put five hundred thousand dollars on the line. So, so yeah, Dan Campbell, uh, hard knocks, incredible hard knocks. It was probably the Hank. Hank said that it was probably one of the best hard knocks episodes that we've had since we started this show because hard knocks has the lulled. best. Yeah, it has lulled, but the it's basically the Dan Campbell biopic, mm -hmm. and it's incredible. The exact quote he said was, "Doesn't matter if you have one ass cheek and three toes, I'll beat your yep. ass." Again, is I that, will too. Is he? Is that? Is he beating like a handicapped person? Yeah. If you have one ass cheek. Yeah, no, I hate that person. <laughs> yeah. Kick his ass. Yeah. He kick also... His, kick his one ass. Dan Campbell, um, everything that you want in a football coach, uh, like especially for hard knocks. I, you know, the jury's still out on actually winning games, mm -hmm. which I think the Lions will be better this year. But he, the way he talks to his team... Like the fact that he's always on the verge of crying, football guy tears. He's he's always on the verge of crying. We opened up where he said the the one ass cheek, three toes guy. He also got very very vivid in his explanation of drowning a human being to a point where it was like, have have you drowned someone, Dan Campbell? Because he's like, we're gonna pull you into the deep end and we're gonna suffocate you and put your head underwater and you'll never breathe again. And it was like, wait. Did this, is this, are you saying something that happened? But holy shit, can that guy fire up a team? He also had um, a, a great analogy that he used. I'm trying to remember his exact words. Well, he came out wearing the grit hat and like right off the bat, just straight up said like, this team's about grit. Yeah. I feel like that was a message to us. I did not appreciate, however, it felt like a direct shot at us when he said, we have two rules, don't be late and don't be overweight. Yeah. And that kind of describes yeah. this entire podcast. Yeah, that is true. That was a little fucked up, Dan. Yep. But besides that, yeah, Dan Campbell's going to be a star. He already is a star in my He's heart. He's a star. But, yeah, the crying, the spitting when he talks. 
The he's, up downs. That's, that's his mouth crying when, yep. he, when he spits out. Chaw the, dog. The up downs, chaw dog, big time chaw dog. Love everything. Is the crying is contagious too? Yeah. Other players. Are Jamal start Williams crying. was crying. The, yeah. Also, I want to see. I want to see an episode where a kicker gives an impassioned speech, like the special teams room, and the kicker starts crying. Yes. Yes. And speaking of crying, shout out Mark Brunel. I, he will never escape that. Every oh, time as I see his face, I'm just like, remember when he cried on TV? He cried because <laughs> because of footballs. Not. It's it's okay. I want to be perfectly perfectly clear. It's it's great to cry about football. It's awful to cry about footballs. Yes. But and, he, and, and he was like, Tom Brady, Tom Brady took air out of those balls. Dude, he played 19 years in the NFL. He has a Super Bowl ring with the Saints. He's a coach on the Detroit Lions right now. And every time I see his face, I'm like, oh, remember when he cried on TV? Yeah, that's, like, that's just his legacy. Uh-huh. It's just it. It's just he he cried on TV. Yeah. And not Dan Campbell cry, which is like no, it's those, that's the most manly thing you could do when Dan Campbell's just screaming at them like, I have a plan for you. Like the reason why we're in pads, all I do is think about you guys. Yeah, well he Pause. also he sprinkles in here and there. <laughs> he always says like he talks to the word men in. Yeah. And if you just put the men the word men into a sentence. It just makes it seem like like you're for the guys. Yes. Like I care about you guys. Yes. Billy actually said after after watching that episode, he's like, I think I might be Dan Campbell's like lost child. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Dan Campbell knows how to how to get the troops going. It was a great episode. Um, we also had Dan Campbell, you know, explaining his his coaching staff. He has just a bunch of guys who played a lot of NFL games, and then we had the clip where it was uh, Deuce Staley and Aaron Glenn going at each other in practice and we all kind of looked at each other watching it by the way shout out the awl kyle for hosting us incredible hosting job mm -hmm. he and his wife like they, they were they put everything out and went to the dog and went to the Winston. dog and they're and they're two friends but awesome time watching at a random AWL's house we're now three for three or four for four not getting murdered in three so we're on a hot street definitely a thousand percent yeah very cool experience exact so record we just show up at a person's house and we're just like yeah let's watch hard knocks but um we all turn to each other including kyle and we're like is do staley and aaron glenn like are they coaching right now or are they just trying to beat each other like in this meaningless scrimmage it was a it was kind of an odd vibe they're playing live action madden against each other <laughs> yeah. they, they're looking at the guys that they coach and they're like, okay, I'm going to kick your ass today. And yeah. Like, you know, it's the exact same thing as when you're playing Madden against your friend. You're talking shit. That's literally what they're doing. I feel like I hope that they go back and they, like, look at the tape and actually coach them up. But I think more so than ever, like, after every practice, they'll probably go back, look at the tape, and Deuce Staley will look at Aaron Glenn on the sidelines and find fucked up, like, weird things that he's doing on the sidelines just to roast him about later. Right. Not so much like what your own players are doing. It was odd coaching. I'll just say that. It was just... I liked it, it Yeah, no, it was it was intense. It's great TV. Yeah, like, I don't... The, the best part about it Hard Knocks... They could have cut around it, too. You never know if yeah, they were no. only using those well, parts or well, whatever. Yeah, what yeah. I was going to say, the best part about Hard Knocks is every time I've ever watched Hard Knocks, and this happens every single year, you watch the team and you're like, this is the best team ever assembled because mm -hmm. they're so physical and because, you know, everything's mic'd up and the pads and everything, you're like... This team has grit, and they are going to be fucking getting after people. One thing I am worried about, though, when it does come time to cut players, Dan Campbell, the crying, mm -hmm. he might die mm -hmm. cutting a player because I, he's he's so sad to see one of his men leave. Yeah, and, and you know how like they always do lip service during the cut days when the coach is like, I'll always put in a reference for you. I think Dan Campbell might spend cut day literally calling all 31 teams, being like, get this guy. Yeah. Because you need he needs a job. Yeah. Yeah, he might just become like an outbound salesperson. <laughs> yeah. He also probably like will call their next of kin yeah. to notify them. Yeah. Like right after they leave, he's like, Hey, I regret to inform you that your son has been cut from the Detroit Lions. I'm yes. very sorry. Yes. The other highlights of the of the show, Aiden Hutchinson singing. All I just love the moment when they make rookies go up and say what their signing bonus is, and he's like 22 million, and everyone just lost it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also had Jamal Williams with the quote of the night when he said, if you're gonna piss like a puppy, stay on the porch, let the big dogs eat, mm -hmm. which now is a shirt that we're selling in the Barstool Sports store. Thank you, Jamal Williams. Yeah, I think Aiden Hutchinson, when he, when he got drafted, and before he got drafted, when we were kind of like reading the tea leaves of, yeah, you're gonna go to Detroit, Dan Campbell wants to draft you because he wants to just like wrestle you. He wants you around for your presence. Right. I actually think now he drafted him just so that he could watch Panay Sewell and Aiden Hutchinson wrestle each other every single day. Iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. By the way, Jake, 
all-time wild moment? Yes, Aiden Hutchinson's first youth football team, the Lions, mm -hmm. wore the jersey, drafted by the Lions. Whew. His mom was like, Ooh, she what? said. What's, what about his mom? Jake? No, oh. she, she whoa, said. Whoa, Jake. Whoa, Jake. Jake. Yeah, 31 yeah, other Jake. teams. We got a little what mini Zach Wilson on our hands I would have been here. happy, but I was secretly really hoping it was just the Lions. Yeah. yeah. And it was. Also, because Jake's, Jake's brother is here right now, and he was like, when he walked in, he's like, Jake is notoriously horny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Always. He's a big mom guy. <laughs> Another moment that was scary, just like the profession, the reporter's phone going off during the uh, press conference. Yes, yes and he that was them awesome. Out. Yeah, if that was me, him. I would have just like turned in my credentials. Were, did you have secondhand embarrassment? Yes. I, t I, talked, I turned to Hank. I'm like, if that was me, I would just walk out. This is it, why Jake like, is it. so, he completes the show so perfectly because I didn't even think twice about that. And Jake like not jotted it down being like, could you imagine being that reporter? It's always funny too when somebody's alarm goes off and it's like ten forty-five. Yeah, and it's like wait, that's your wake-up alarm? Yeah, right now. Yeah, so I mean, it was a great episode. It was a great episode. Great wild moment. Great he's, episode. Yeah, he's he's going to be running training camp like it's a mosh Short, pit, though. which is awesome. Yeah, like it's going to be they're they're going to be hitting because studies have shown he is really Billy's father. Studies have shown that <laughs> that having what velocity <laughs> and violence. In, in a certain amount. What was the quote, Billy? I know that you paid attention to cool it. Cool Throne studies volume <laughs> and intensity is essential for a winning season. There we yeah. go. Studies. That's studies true. are back. Hank's right, though. There was, I don't know what HBO is doing to us, but what's up with the 45 minute episode? We all were just like, wait, it's over now? They needed 60 seconds of DeAndre Hopkins slow motion. It's fucking bullshit. Yeah. For the I, to promo the end season one. Give me, the, give me those 15, give me that back. And then the, the, that was actually great. The, after the credits were rolling, the offensive line room when the guy was just like, I don't know what player it was when he was just like, I have so many cool clothes, I can't wait to fit in. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh man, it's going to be great. <laughs> yep. And no busting ass in the running backs room either. Yes. You yes. fart, you're out. Yes. And Deuce is going to count to 10 when you go outside. You get fined for farting. Yeah. You, yeah. you said section five or something. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you get fined for farting. Yeah. I mean, it was a great episode. I'm excited. The hard knock season. Like, did. It's one of those things, too, where they can't give us enough Dan Campbell. Like, right. I, there is no... My thirst for Dan Campbell is unquenched, even after watching 45 minutes of him. Yeah, I would like somebody to actually, like, hold my head under Dan Campbell <laughs> and just drown in Dan Campbell. Drown. Yeah, just a pool of Dan, Dan Campbell. Campbell. Take just, me to the deep tears. end of Dan Campbell. Just Dan Campbell's tears. Yeah. Like, drown me in Dan Campbell's yes. tears. Yes, I'm, I'm for it. It's definitely coming too, but they kind of foreshadowed it. But we'll get it. We'll get like a full Jared episode. Too. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he's nice. our guy. We gotta have him back on. Yeah, there's a, there's shout out to one AWL who tweets me every day, being like, "It's been this many days since you've had Jared Goff on." That guy's doing. He's 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 working hard. Open invite. Yeah, Jared. he's doing. He's doing a good job. Um, speaking of the AWLs, we are in Denver. We did a meetup. It was awesome. We had. I mean the the line was like we actually at one point. We did like a double take because we thought the line was for the game, for the Rockies game, yeah. but it was literally a line down the block. And, you know, we got to meet everyone, take pictures with everyone. But it, it was such a – like those moments are so cool to remember just how like we have so many fans everywhere and how big the world is. And it's like not all these people are – the you know, I, I know Monday I was like complaining about the very, very vocal minority on Twitter. Like these are all people that just love our show – and, and support us. So shout out to all of them. It's I also awesome. think that, that Denver people are amongst the chillest. Yeah. I would, I would say maybe the chillest city in North America. Yeah. And the variety of drugs that we were given to uh, by listeners. All of them. Yeah. It was like every I, type. I felt like I was in Hamsterdam. Yeah. It was yeah, amazing. Name a drug. <laughs> yeah. Actually, one guy <laughs> handed PFT a piece of paper and I was like, and PFT was like, what is this? And the guy was like, it's a parlay. And I turned to PFT. I was like, I 100% thought that was acid. Like, there's yeah. no way. Like, well, it like, might still be. Well, I don't know. He definitely phrased it like it was acid. <laughs> he was like, here, here's a folded up piece of paper. And he was like, hang on to this for later. Yeah. And I was like, okay, what is it? He's like, oh, it's a parlay. It's going to hit. Yeah. So I'm going to put the parlay in week one, yes. obviously. You have the to. The napkin parlay. Yeah. Uh, and we, and yeah. we'll publicize that. We'll publicize the napkin parlay so other people can that play That could along. be acid. And if you, yeah. And we'll put like, do the math and be like, okay, I'm going to try to win like 800 tabs of acid. Yeah. With this parlay. Maybe eat that paper later and let us know how it goes. I mean, we're in Denver. It probably has some runoffs. So yes. I think yes. And the, and the one, the, the AWL who saw us on Monday 
after we did the tour at Coors, which was awesome. And he came up to me just dead serious. He's just like, big cat, I want you to have my biggest nug. Mm-hmm. And he yeah. just took out the biggest fucking nug I've ever seen. I was like, okay, cool. That guy also <laughs> had a pair of my sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, somehow. That's right. that's he was right. like, I wanted to give you your sunglasses back. <laughs> you left them at, a, at the Pup Punk concert in Denver like eight months ago. What a great series of gifts that guy what gave. Is, yeah, dude rocks. That <laughs> yeah. dude rocks. Like, who... Who like just willingly gives away their biggest nug? Mm-hmm. That's not something you do. You keep your biggest nug. I've also noticed that everybody in Denver, not everyone, but a, a, a sizable majority of them, look a lot like Jake Plummer. Yeah, they have they've mustaches. They've got, a lot got of long mustaches. hair, mustaches, and they all appear to be in like really good shape, but wearing a dirty T-shirt. Yes. Yeah. Pretty much. It's. I mean, it's a great. It's a great city. We've had a great time. We went. We went to Coors. We went to Colorado. Boulder, we got to see the facility there. Um, mm-hmm. We've been everywhere. We went to Jake Plummer's Mushroom Farm. That's coming up in a second. My leg really hurts. Yeah. I was given this is one of the best gifts I've ever been given by an AWL. It's a, it's a Baja Blast polo. He oh, just hell like came yes. to me. He's like, mm-hmm. I know you love Baja Blast. It's too small. I tried it on. It's too small for me. It is right up your alley, though, PFT. Whoa. So I'm going to gift wow. my, my favorite Whoa. gift to Incredible. you. Thank you, Hank. Wow. Wear well. I know you will. I know, I know. You know I, know. I love Baja yeah. Blast. And I know it's just, that's your color. That's that's a good color All for right. you. Low-key, diet Baja Blast fucking hits. Yeah. It slaps. I had one for breakfast the other day. Ooh, nice. I'm living I'm living. Yeah, it's Groot Week. Living yeah. Moss. Yeah. Live clean. Yeah. Live Moss. Groot Week I am is, living Moss. Yeah. yeah. Live Moss the whole time. What do you say, Billy? I got a Space Force coin. Oh. I'm a Space Force officer. That was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I, I think my favorite uh, person that I, I met today is a listener and he saves up all of his episodes. Yes. And he saved up like six months worth of episodes because he goes to work on a fucking submarine. Yeah. And this so he listens to all part of my day. He catches up. Like he's probably listening to the Super Bowl episode. Yeah, he's right listening. Now. He's in the past. I was like, so dude, you're just time traveling? He's like, yeah, it's pretty sweet. Yeah, he was like, yo, I just heard like yesterday morning that was fucked up what you said to John Cena. <laughs> yeah, right, right. That's, <laughs> yeah. His friend just died. Billy's List member, the submarine guy. Oh, oh nice. nice. There you go. Beautiful. Now, now I kind of so let's do (laughs) premature (laughs) Super Bowl predictions. He's probably listening to this six months from now. Super Bowl week. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Sorry about that war you started with Russia. (laughs) Yeah, that's yeah, that's kind of a bummer. You're going to be on high alert. (laughs) (laughs) That submarine was actually defecting to the United States. We send you all the signals. Um, But yeah, it was it was it was a great time. It really is like I know that we, we should be used to it, but every time we do. A meet and greet like that. We didn't think people were going to show up. Yeah, well, like, we knew not. people were going to show up, but we we're like, oh yeah, Buffalo would have been way more. Pa- I, Denver was that was. I mean, conserve. What do you think? A thousand people. It was two hours straight of pictures and and talking to people, and it was like every time it happens, I should expect it, and then it happens. I'm like, that was awesome. Like that was really fucking cool that we got to see everyone and like be out with the people. So yeah, shout out everyone. Um, especially the Cardinals fans who got to see the Rockies just shit down their throat. That was extra fun. Um, well, I think it was there like was a lot of Cardinals two. fans. Yeah, they, well, yeah, they're playing. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, uh, all right, what other? We got to talk about a couple other stories. Kevin Durant wants um, Sean Marks and Steve Nash fired. So that's the latest in the Nets world. I kind of agree with Kevin Durant. Well, so here's the thing. I, I think that Sean Marks is a bad GM because he brought Kevin Durant in. Yeah. So Kevin Durant's or right. Or Kyrie, at least. They should fire him <laughs> yeah. for bringing him in there. But yeah. with Steve Nash, I do agree. Like, Steve Nash, I like him. I think he's a good, a good guy. I think his players like him as a person. But watching him in the play, what was that look, Hank? <laughs> watching, I'm not talking about his coach. His coaching, I think, is not good. I think he's... He's like, got to play Blake more. Yeah, he needs to play Blake Griffin way more. When we saw him in the playoffs, it was abundantly clear. Like, he doesn't... He doesn't fight for his guys at all. Yeah, yeah. I think the players like. Yeah, I don't think the players respect him as like a coach. They just like he's a cool guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah just have him as like minister of vibes but to hang out. It is Kevin Durant's pick. Like he, you know, maybe he didn't say I want Steve Nash, but he had to have signed off on it. That's the that's the best part about this whole story is that it comes out that Kevin Durant's demanding both the coach and the GM are fired, which is it feels unprecedented. But I'm sure LeBron's done it many times. Um, but you can't like Joe Sai, you can't you can't put the the toothpaste back in the tube here. You you gave Kevin Durant like basically ownership of this team. You can't be like, "Oh my god, how could this happen? He wants everyone fired." Mm-hmm. You they they did the press conference after they got swept by the Celtics being like Kyrie Irving being like, "Yeah, Kevin and I are got to get got to get together and figure out what's best for this team." Like they 
they run the team. You gave them the team. You can't be upset that now the guys who you gave the team to are trying to run the team. Kevin Durant has left the group chat with Mar what's yeah. his name? Marsh and, and uh, Steve Nash. Yeah, but yeah, Ben Simmons. Yeah. That was the other part. Ben Simmons came out that he uh, before game four, they had a group chat with all the players and they asked him, like, are you ready to go? And he just left the group chat, which mm -hmm. is unbelievable. A hilarious move. Like yeah. I whatever you want to say about Ben Simmons. Leaving the group chat is always a power move. I don't know how to leave a group chat. Oh, it's that's so just, funny. I do it all the time. Like, I'm still in group chats from neighborhoods that I lived in 11 years ago. Yeah. 11 I years ago. Shit. And I get texts all day and I still haven't figured out how to leave it yet. Yeah. I'll leave the group. I leave the group chat all the time just as a joke. Like someone says something you don't like, you just like leave because it's, <laughs> just, it's just a very funny thing they, to do. They then should, you can add it back. They should add a feature where if somebody leaves a group chat, you can then like that. Yeah. I <laughs> like that they left the group chat. Well, I also like to add people back who leave. Like, Brandon Walker likes to leave group chats, like when we start talking about how Ben Mintz is the king of the South. Mm -hmm. So he'll leave, and then I'll immediately add him back, being like, you aren't going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ben Simmons did dispute that in a way. He tweeted out, must be a slow news day, and then some crying face emojis. So, so that's not so at true. all denying so, yeah, it. So, so it's 100% true. true. It's 100% yes. true. <laughs> And yeah, it is a slow news day. Yeah, 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 it is. It's it's fucking August, Ben. Yeah, and Hard Knocks hasn't come out yeah. yet. Yeah, and then Roquan Smith uh, notes app the Bears, which is never good. Mm -hmm. So he wants. He said that he's being disrespected. Ryan Poles, the GM, to his credit, did a press conference almost immediately, which I I do think is like a little bit of a change because he's like, I'm going to meet this head on, and uh, who wants an off ball linebacker? Because it looks like. It's up for grabs now. Yeah. I mean, he's a good player. He's a very good player, but he's, it's the problem is it's one of those situations where he's a very good player, but he's not a position that is like a top, you know, four position on a field that you have to pay. Like, it's not a QB. It's not an edge rusher. It's not a wide receiver. It's not an offensive, like a premier offensive lineman. Like, that's – I don't know what you – you got to pay him, but you also don't want to pay him so much. Although the cap doesn't matter. Fuck it. Pay him. I, I think that linebackers have kind of become the running backs of the defense where you don't need to pay a starter. Right. You don't need a starter. Right. And I, in a way, like, I miss the old days when it was, you know, like a, a linebacker-centric league when you had Erlacher and Ray Lewis yeah. as, like, the faces Derek of Brooks, the league. Yeah. It, though, that, that was a good time to be a football fan. Yes. That was the age of jacked up. Yeah. Yeah. And they, I mean, they go hand in hand too, right? Mm -hmm. The running back position and like running the ball and yep. those linebackers. It's it's no, it's it's clear what's happened to the league with the past, you know, heavy league. I I I hope the Bears figure it out, but I just know that waking up to getting no sapped by the best player on your team mm -hmm. is never a good sign. It's not good. No, you can't. It was it was a long no sap too. He really notes it. Was it more than one page? Did you have like It was two pages, pictures? I believe, yeah. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, and then Ian Rapport was like, you know, instantly had just every detail because Roquan Smith, like, you know, it was told to him and it was, yeah, it's bad, bad mm -hmm. scene. Let me ask you this. Um, in D.C., do you think, would you say it's a good or a bad thing to have your defensive line coach get fired like three weeks into training camp? Good. Do you think that's a good thing? Yeah. Because okay, yeah. you don't want to go into the season with him. So If he's bad, get him out. I saw a picture of the new defensive line coach in D.C. I think it's an upgrade. Yeah. This guy just – he was wearing athletic shorts, and he had a belt on. That is a fucking coach. Yeah. But it, you know what I mean? Like, you don't want to – if there's a problem, deal with it now. Yeah. Don't deal with it in, in October. Well, it would be nice to deal with it in January. Yeah, of I course. Think. But, you know, you had to wait till he showed up to realize that he sucked. So, basically, Rivera spent – the last like seven months being like you know what this guy really stinks maybe he'll, i've known him for the last 15 years maybe he'll really turn a corner this spring yeah something will like be this different. is his time yeah yeah i mean everyone has that friend who's like yeah something will be different now yeah but i like the new guy just based on vibes alone that is that is good vibes uh anything else in the in the world of sports that we got to hit before we hit hot sequel to uh for sale Chris Sale, Chris yeah. Sale. He, he Joe Biden himself. Or, or Jim Calhoun, the, the OG of falling off his bike. Mm -hmm. fell, off uh, his, fell off his bike, broke his hand that, after the season. I don't believe it. Yeah, well, so I, <laughs> I, I, I just don't believe it. I was going to say, like, gut, just going off my gut right now, until I see video evidence, I think he was, like, playing basketball. Yeah. I think it was something else. Yeah, no, I, don't, I do not believe. Because Chris Sale, I want to say, um, who was it? Yeah, Chris Sale... Chris Sale uh, broke his foot when he was on the White Sox, and he said it was because he was stepping off his truck. 
So he just is the king of weird injuries. Mm-hmm. So I, I, don't, I don't really buy it. So like Mr. Bean, how does he have all these freak? And then he had uh, Tommy John surgery, right? So how many seasons has he played for the Red Sox? I got some stats for you. All right, uh, stat this me is from, up. From, from John Tomase on Twitter. Signed a five-year, $145 million uh, contract extension in 2020. Who did? Chris Sale. Okay. Since then, he's made 11 starts. Oof. Posted a playoff ERA of eight. Oof. Missed nearly two years to Tommy John. Contracted COVID, which that just seems like a ricochet. That's, 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 yeah, that's, that's awesome. Mean, that. Come on, don't throw that on there. <laughs> Come on, everyone in the world yeah. has had COVID multiple times. Jake Bro- had COVID. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Jake Marsh had COVID. Yeah. Like, that uh, should tell you it can get anywhere. Yeah, yeah. That, that's just unnecessary, but it's, it's in tweet. Broken a rib throwing a pitch. Broken Wait, a, what was that? Broken what? Broken a rib. Okay, you throwing, say that slower. Yeah. <laughs> broke a rib throwing a pitch. Yeah. yeah. He has. This is all the things okay. he has okay. done. We're he still has, under the he has core. broken yeah. a rib throwing a pitch. Okay. He has broken a pinky on a liner, which. That was another one that was a freak injury. Yeah, that, but that's not like that shit happens. Yeah, that's, right. If, if it happens on the field, that's a much different story than like I, you know, getting off a truck or like right. falling off a bike and broken a rib falling off a bike. I want to see his bike too. Because, like, if if he can produce the bike within 24 hours, a picture of it, I'll tell you if he fell off it or not. Like, if he's if he's riding one of those, uh, like, Tour de France bikes, then I believe it. But if he shows a picture of a bike and it's, like, a mountain bike, there's no way that he fell off his bike. Mm-hmm. Or if, he, That's if you ask him to produce a, a picture of the bike and he just doesn't have a bike, like, you know what I mean? That you, it, there are certain people that you can tell, like they're putting on it's their fucking be a cycling. Bike. Yeah, they're yeah. putting on their spandex Lance Armstrong you lock suit, in. and they're yeah they're locking in because that's how you fall. Yeah. Is you lock in, and they're just you know cycling around everywhere. That guy falls off his bike if he's going around on a fucking I don't even know what they're called. What's like a, probably a, a Schwinn, a Huffy, a, a Schwinn, a French bike. No, 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 a, no. A I'm saying like bike. the opposite of a. French oh yeah, bike. yeah, Huffy, a Huffy, a Schwinn, a, uh, a mount, uh, uh, mountain tra- track. Just walk a outside track? right here in Denver and see what's on the first T-shirt yeah. you see. A track, That's probably Is one of those track bikes. A bike? Yeah. We're we're yeah, big bikes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can you can tell on the a show. mongoose. A mongoose. Mm-hmm. Yes, thank you, Billy. A mongoose. That's the Walmart. If he's got a mongoose, he didn't fall off that bike. I think it's really impressive though. He's he's made what you said, 120 million dollars. He's Since made 2020. He's okay. So he's gotten paid $10 million to start. Yeah. That rocks. You know, what would be cool is if he, if he fell off pegs, remember pegs, he, if he was getting pegs driven around best. by somebody, Yeah, if he was on the front pegs, <laughs> that'd be awesome. That'd be so fucking cool. Pegs were the best. Um, okay. Anything else in the sports world? Serena Williams, Williams retiring. Oh, she did. Uh, basically go. My hot okay. seat was the sport of tennis. Losing, oh, uh, losing. Uh, great. Uh, oh, Serena Williams. Ooh. Is she retiring or is she doing she's, like a... She's slowly like... She's doing a golf retirement. Oh, she's going to play again. Yeah. And she's not even the good one. No, she is. She is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Venus, yeah, yeah. Venus yeah. is the older sister. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Serena's the goat. Mm-hmm. That's the goat. Right. Yeah, she so is the goat. Yeah, easily. Right. Yeah, right. tennis is popular sports uh, podcast, so I figured we got to talk uh, about that. Mm-hmm. Didn't she marry that dude who created Reddit or something? I think it's Alexis Ohanian. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Uh, mm. All right, now I was talking tennis. Thanks, Jake. Oh, and the Orioles are back. They keep winning. Fuck you, Hank. What are you looking like that for? You gave up. I didn't give up. I couldn't cash out the bet. The bet's still there. I didn't give up. I said I didn't like the fact that they gave up. But I didn't give up. I said, fuck them. I might have given up a little. <laughs> um, but I'm back. I get a mulligan. All right, let's do uh, Hot Seat Cool Throw, and then we'll get to Jake Plummer, which is... And great, great interview. Uh, Hot Seat Cool Thrones brought to you by our friends at Game Time, the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports. Game Time is a ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows, and they guarantee the lowest price. Uh, football season is coming back. You want your tickets to your games? You got to go to Game Time. College football, football on Sunday, NFL. Game Time has it all. So check it out. Uh, which. NFL stadium are you looking forward to going to this year? Billy. Meadowlands. There we go. Game time. Game time's got you. Game time has you. So the biggest last minute price drops can be found on the seats you thought you could never buy. Download the game time app. Go to the account tab to create a login and redeem code PMT for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download game time. Last minute tickets. Lowest price. Guaranteed. 
Game Time. Use code PMT for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Thank you to Game Time. Only place you should be getting your tickets. Football is back. Game Time is back. Go ahead, download it right now. Use code PMT for twenty dollars off your first ticket purchase. PFT Hot se- or Hank PFT Hank Hot Seat with Throne. Hank, I want you to go first because yeah. you were so nice and you gave me this it's, Baja Blast. It's polo. fucking me up that we're like I'm. I feel like I'm being interviewed. <laughs> Maybe you are. Uh, oh shit. My hot seat is Kelly Olynyk. Yeah. Oh. The clinic. Yeah. Former Celtic great. Former, I think, was he on the Bullets? Was he on the... Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Former <laughs> Washington great. Who cares? He got married. He has long hair, too. He's got, you know, allegedly seems like he has flow. We don't all has know each other. Of flow. <laughs> you guys are like Jeep guys? He yeah. got married, put his wedding photos out, and he wore a snapback in all his wedding photos. And is, and is getting destroyed on yeah. the internet. Yeah. You can't do a snapback. No. You, he no. was wearing. He was doing Jordans too, which I think that's a little. You know, you can maybe make that work. Yeah, people do that now. Yeah, but, but a you snapback snap back. is is crazy. What about top hat? I feel like top hats. Yeah, yeah. Do. yeah. with like, a tuxedo. Like, yeah. I mean, I mean, like a or scally. Yeah. I'm thinking like Abraham Lincoln top hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. with a tuxedo. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a nice enough tuxedo? Like you can, you can, you can make it look fly. You, but you can't. Like you can make the old school hats look good because like tuxedo is an old school look, but. Mm-hmm. Snapback just, just doesn't go. It was yeah, it was a tough look, but I guess he doesn't give a fuck. He's made how much money? A how lot. much money has he made? Oh man, is this gonna bum you out? Remember like when he 80... broke Kevin Love's shoulder? I mean, that was just all in the game. That was the same thing as Jimmy Butler. People look too far into that stuff. <laughs> Kelly Olynyk career yeah, earnings. No, everyone did. take a guess. Eighty nine million. Yeah, oh, fuck. Hank took my number. You said eighty nine. Ninety my, million. It's kind of he's, he's gonna be one of these guys. that's like one hundred twenty or something. No, fifty. So so far in his career, he's made seventy, oh, he's but he's broke. he's he's set to make his next two years because I think they're all guaranteed ninety five. That's nuts. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's nuts. Yeah, it's, it's just yeah. His biggest show you. his biggest contribution to any team was the Kevin Love. Yeah, well, it's a yeah. big contribution. Yeah. If, if you're six foot eight, you should make fifty million dollars playing basketball. You're, otherwise, there's, you're a failure. There's really no excuse. Yes, correct. <laughs> if I was six foot eight, you all be <laughs> fucked. It would have been over. Over. You'd be dunking on. Billy. I'd be in three Hall of Fames. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and my cool throne is Mississippi State. I've I've honestly talked a lot of shit about Mississippi State. It was my least favorite school to visit. I put it on the Mount Flushmore of, of colleges. I think when we did that or something. But in their new stadium, they're in their balcony seats at Davis Wade. It's going to allow fans to bring in their own refrigerator games to store cold beverages. So like they're elevated. Bleacher seats with like room underneath. I like that. They're doing the. It's, it's, that's great. It's it's innovation at its finest. That's They're doing great. the thing where you know you have to make your stadiums feel more like somebody's home uh-huh. because you're competing against people staying home and watching games from their couch. They're really taking that to the next. I level. like. Well, that. it's like NASCAR. Yeah, which is great. That's one of the pretty much the best part about more, it, NASCAR. More, more stadiums need to be like Maction too, where you can leave. Northern Illinois does it. I think a couple other ones do it too, where you can leave at halftime and go tailgate and come back. Mm-hmm. That's a great so yeah that. step step in the right direction. Also, shout out Mississippi State playing in the inaugural Barstool Sports Invitational for basketball. Yes, true. Yes, Couple bring your own our guy Jelly. Well. Yes, our Jelly guy Walker. Jelly, Andy Kennedy. Loaded shout field, out November 11th in Philly. The big UAB guys this year. Mm-hmm. Is that it, Hank? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good, good job. Hank. Good, good job. job, Hank. Thanks. Uh, my hot seat is Domino's. Mm. Putting Domino's pizza on the hot seat. They just got kicked out of Italy. Yeah, they. You can't lose it. You, know, you know how bad you can't. You can't. <laughs> you can't. That's you can't lose it. Like if you're if you're a pizza place and you lose Italy, you can't. That's it's over. like if you're selling heroin and you lose Baltimore. Yeah, you can't do it. You it's can't bad. Do it. You can't like have that. It. That's you're running a bad business. Yeah. At that point, and so they were so unpopular in Italy, they were just like, uh, we're just gonna go home. We're Damn. gonna we're gonna pack up our shit and leave because I guess Italians don't like pizza. Yeah. I guess that's it's a Papa John's country. Oh I don't know. Oh my god. That yeah. sucks. It's really bad. That's really bad. It's so fucked. Yeah, you can't you you cannot lose Italy no. if you're a pizza company. Probably the first first pizza company to ever have to fold up shop in Italy. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? It's bad. Damn. Um so RIP Domino's and then my cool throne, give me one second here. My cool throne is going to be Cam Smith. Mm. Cuz Cam Smith uh, recurring guest on part of my take, he came on right after he won the Open Championship. That's true. Uh, he's leaving the PGA Tour and going to the Live Tour. Oh, allegedly, as as first reported 
by pardon my taste. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. I like yeah. that. Please credit. Well, no, he said that he would do it today, but yeah. I reported that like two days after the open. Yeah. Please credit. I'm a golf insider. And he a, won't. He head. won't admit it, right? He refuses to acknowledge it. Yeah. He's just he's Even Irish he goodbying. It? Yeah. And Saudi helloing. So he's he's going to be joining the live tour. Hundred million dollars, pretty good. But then the report came out today that there was a live lawyer that said, I mean, I just saying it out loud, like being a lawyer for the live tour. That's got to be a very scary profession. Yeah, your whole life is like is like Better Call Saul. Mm-hmm. Um, he's saying that uh, the money that's won by the players in tournaments is actually recouped against the live contracts. So I guess if they pay you a hundred million dollars and you win a tournament. It's just like, we're going to take that off your tab so you don't get an extra check. What? Even though Live Tour has been saying all along that the money that you win in a tournament is on top of that. One of their lawyers publicly said today that's recouped against the Live contracts. Ooh. So big controversy now. Ooh. Who would have thought that Mohammed bin Salman might have some Ooh. underhanded business dealings? Is the Live running out of money? They might be. They might be in bad trouble. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, I, feel I like hope that's Cam a significant Smith, clause. If you paid me a hundred million dollars and you're like, if you win, we're just going to take that out. I would be the worst golfer. Ever. Yeah. Like if, if we if we've said a hundred million is our number. Mm-hmm. If the live got us for a hundred million dollars, and then like we have the Aaron Rodgers episode that does numbies, and they're like, yeah, actually that's coming off your tab. I'm out. Fuck that. Yeah, I'm out. You know what? That's where my morals morals step up. Yep. I'm when, like, I don't think this is cool anymore. When the check doesn't clear, that's, yeah. that's as far as I go. I, I start I start having real strong thoughts on uh, a global scale. Yep. Yeah. All right. That does it for me. Okay. Good uh, stuff. Thanks, My man. hot seat. Yeah, good job. My hot seat Thanks, is, is uh, Beth Mullins and the Beth Mullins game. It's dead. It's gone. So Big Ten uh, has their new contract, new, new deal. It's uh, Fox primarily, and then they also have NBC and CBS. So the Big Ten is going to be on, I think they're going to do all the windows on Saturday where it's 12 o'clock, 3.30, and like a night game on all three networks. So that means, unfortunately, ESPN will not have the Big Ten, and we will not have Beth Moens uh, putting us you know, in a perfect spot on a Saturday morning watching Purdue and Northwestern have a punt off. And mm-hmm. I'm going to miss that because that game – means a lot to me. Yeah, it's kind of like soccer adjacent, where there's not going to be a lot of scoring. It's going to be on early in the morning. It's going to introduce to your day like calmly. It's going to ease you into a long day of football. There was nothing better than watching game day and then having it just immediately, like the, the hype of game day, then just flip over to like a, a dreary Big Ten campus with a half-filled filled stadium late in like November and just being put to sleep, and it was and, just great. And those games are always zero three in the yeah. second quarter. Yeah, and they yeah. waste zero time. Corso puts on the headgear, and then boom, boom, kick off. welcome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. And it's just I'm gonna miss that. That was part of my Saturday. It was a great way to ease you into Saturday because, like, I'm I don't like, and I know that like the big noon kickoff and everything. I don't like having a huge game right away. I like to ease my way in because you know there'll be there's so many games going on. I want to just watch all the other games and then be like, all right, 3.30 is a huge game. 8 o'clock is a huge game. I need, to, I need to ease my way in. Well, it would honestly be fucked up to have a game that started at 11 o'clock be a 50 to 40 game. Right. I, I wouldn't like that. Right. It's like this is too much. Right. Exactly. So I'm very sad that that's gone. Um, and then my cool throne is uh, me because Colin Coward, of all people, did a better job and more gracious job of explaining my size problems, as Hank has said, <laughs> than that's, anyone else. That's a direct quote. Yeah, about size talking problems. about your length of your feet and legs. Oh, really? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the coward, guy has notoriously long feet. <laughs> coward <laughs> coward uh, play, or talked about our Aaron Rodgers interview, and he is now going on seven years of the running gag of pretending he doesn't know who we mm-hmm. are. Uh, he, he, he dropped the PFT commentator yep. always plays he's, that's that's it, basically my yeah, name yeah he's, I, like yeah. I, get, I get that a good like seven times a year from prominent people or yeah. pmt so, commenter yeah pmt yeah. commenter that and happens then, occasionally and then he described me as a stand-up comedian big guy big physical presence <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and i i like at this point i respect coward for doing this because he is so committed to it the guy is obsessed with sports coverage podcasting all these things. So for him to pretend he doesn't know what the number one sports podcast is, 
I actually tip my cap. But like, it's funny. And he also went out of his way to unfollow us yeah. both at the same time, like three years ago. Right. When we were roasting him. So he knows exactly who of we are. Of course he does. He, Dude, he's obs- like someone like that is he so. He has obs- a podcast he's, network. He has a podcast network. He's obsessed with numbers and all these things. But again, I at first, when, it, when we were like in year three or four, I was like, oh, that's, that's fucked up. Like he should know who we are. Now it's he definitely knows who he are who we are and he's doing it as a bit and I respect it. Cal I really I, I respect it. His daughter follows all of us. Oh. Bonk. Uh sup. Bonk. Um I got a funny Colin Coward story. This is back in like 2014, I want to say. I went to South by Southwest. Were in you Austin. pissing next to him? No, I wasn't oh, okay. peeing next to him. One day. I would cheer him so hard. <laughs> so I, I go to this South by Southwest event and it's me. I'm meeting up with Cliff Kingsbury. Or not Cliff Kingsbury. Yeah, uh, what? Huh? Kurt Goldsberry. Okay. <laughs> I always fucked that one. A little bit of a mess. <laughs> yeah. So it's me. Kirk's more. Uh, he's hotter. He, and he also has accomplished more. Yeah, he's, he's way He's got a hotter. gold medal. Yeah. So it, it's me <laughs> and Kurt. And Kurt, we go to uh, South by Southwest and Colin Coward's there. And so he's like, okay, I want to go up and introduce myself to Colin. I think he might know who I am. So I just stand there. I'm watching the two of them shake hands. And uh, Colin's talking real close to him, and he spits on him while he talks. And, and it's like this one giant bubble of spit that comes out of Cow Turd's mouth, and it lands right on Kirk's face. And he doesn't know what to do about it, but he starts like looking at me out of the corner of my, out of his eye, being like, "I can't like wipe this off because <laughs> Colin knows that he spit on me, but I don't want." Colin to feel bad that he spit on me. Right. And it becomes like a Mexican standoff of like, <laughs> is Colin going to stop talking or is, is Kirk going to be able to extricate himself from the conversation and wipe the spit off his face? And to his credit, he, he stuck through the entire conversation, turned to me, goes, oh my God, Colin Coward just spit on my face. <laughs> just wipes, wipes himself it, down. It is that, I think that Kirk played it well because you have to, as the spitter, you have to acknowledge that you spit. Yeah, that's on you to be yeah, like, oh, you I'm sorry. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. But if you don't do that, then, yeah, you can't be like, dude, you just spit on me. Yep. Coward just, yeah, can't admit anything. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah, That's he's a got a problem. He does. He does. You see, Colin, let me explain this in a way you might understand. <laughs> You're like Blockbuster, okay? <laughs> and we're like Netflix. Yes. You had your shot, Colin, and you missed it. Colin, you are uh, the first wife. We're the second <laughs> wife. The hot wife, the wife that's 20 years younger that mm-hmm. everyone's like, ooh, look at his new wife. Mm-hmm. That's us. You want to have fun with us, but I don't think you can rock this body, Colin. <laughs> oh, then my other cool throw in a sportsmanship because Little League World Series is back and everyone loves sportsmanship. I hate it. <laughs> I only <laughs> deserve double sportsmanship. Dave, Dave what? Specific scenarios. Yes, yes, yes. Our boss, Dave, got roasted on Twitter. He's t- trending. I just loved it because, like, if you didn't expect Dave to tweet exactly that, like, welcome to the show. The show's been going for a long time. Mm -hmm. That's the show. (laughs) He has that take every year, and people get mad about it every year. Big Cat, what what was his take? So doing Hank's role right now. Yeah, it was... I was uh, was actually... I'm not fucking explaining a backstory. That's a great... That's a good work. A kid, a and kid got to come out yet. When it does, people are gonna. I'm gonna be vindicated. A kid got beamed uh, in the in the head, and then the the pitcher. These are 12 year old boys. 11, 12. Mm-hmm. Uh, the pitcher was shaken up because he rocked him with a with a fastball to the to the dome. Was crying on the mound, and then the kid went and like consoled him and was like, "It's okay. I'm gonna be okay." And then Dave was like, "This is bullshit. You're trying to play for a spot in Williamsport." That's the pitcher's plate, and mm-hmm. like, why would you ever let him off the hook when you, you have that him on kid the was road? leaning? What would Dan in? Campbell say to that, dude? I no, I like I said, he's been running the same play for a very long time. And the internet gets mad about it every time. They can't stop it. Yeah, they can't stop it. Yeah, he's just, gonna keep doing. Everyone it. Everyone just piles on, and they're like, "This is what." He, like, if you didn't know this was the play, he's gonna run power to right the until you can <laughs> until your defensive line can uh, step together. No, it's uh, no, he's gonna run power right until you stop quote retweeting it and saying Dave Portner is a piece of shit, mm-hmm. <laughs> like. And then getting your retweets. Yep. So just keep happening. All right. Uh, Billy. My hot seat is the Jets offensive line. Uh, Makai Becton shattered his right kneecap and is out for the season. What? That he sounds one of our painful. Top picks. Yeah. Billy. Uh, that's bad. Oh. It's bad. Oh, no. It's bad. Uh, Zach Wilson getting sacked on four to five, four out of five dropbacks in practice right after it happened. Oh, no. Bad. But. Kai Becton had been playing in practice 
before that and last season he didn't get much playing time due to injuries. So still positive. And Zach still positive. Wait, we know he doesn't need protection. Because the guy because the first round pick has always been injured, it's not a big deal that he got injured again. Actually, no. Yep. Yeah, no, well, I actually yeah. buy that. You know, yep. you're you're right. I am right. You're right. Yep. Um, He's you can't rely on him, so to lose him is not a big deal. Yeah, so he hasn't He's he was really overweight, right? There were eyewitness accounts. Maybe okay. in this room. <laughs> was it uh, Sasquatch at, at practice? <laughs> who saw him puking after uh, like eleven on eleven drills? Mm -hmm. I, maybe that eyewitness count. It's just stomach crying though. That's good. Yeah. So I mean, who knows? I think maybe this time will do him well, mature, and we'll see him this, next year. The shattered kneecap could be really good for his NFL career. Is what you're saying. I'm trying to be optimistic. Because <laughs> uh, I was talking to Memes about it earlier. And Memes, I think, is a, probably the biggest Jets fan that we have on this podcast, right? I'd say so, probably. And he was, he was really not that concerned about Makai. He yeah, was like, no. you know what? Kind of what you said. Like, he's been injured. He's overweight. Reports were that he might even get cut. Yeah, if he's always injured. Yeah. And he's just injured again. No big deal. Exactly. Mm -hmm. okay. And my cool throne is studies because of Dan Campbell. And my other cool throne is Jake Paul's boxing career because he might be fighting Andrew Tate by the end of the year. Whoa. Okay. I think that would actually be a very fun fight to watch. Your two heroes going up against Kickboxing? Not, <laughs> no, regular boxing. Uh, after his, Billy, are you going to be like Brady Quinn's uh, uh, or AJ Hawk's sister and wear a split no, jersey of no, them? I don't even know. <laughs> Billy's not going to be able to watch just, because it's like it's I, Brady I Quinn's sister. I can't I'm watch either one Angie of them. I'm not an Angie Tate hurt. fan. <laughs> you guys just put that on me because it's funny. No, you are. Don't don't <laughs> lie, Billy. No. Billy, you showed me Andrew Tate for the first time. Yeah, Billy, because you, because you like, he's been trending. He's okay, a top G. Yeah. Billy Billy likes. Hank is a bigger top G fan. Uh, than I am. You like observing Andrew Tate like one would a zoo animal. Yeah. To just like study their habits and then maybe also pick up one or two of them. Yeah. I mean, Ironically, this, but then it yeah. evolves into reality. <laughs> he likes to study them and be like, wow. <laughs> okay, this, Jake. <laughs> this crocodile isn't letting the, the female crocodiles drive a car. I kind of dig them. <laughs> the funniest uh, thing ever, though, was that Andrew Tate was talking about how bad women drivers are and his examples that he was giving are he's like, I've been in like a dozen car accidents and they're all with women. It's like, Wait, dude, you've been in 12 car accidents? <laughs> you have been in 12 car accidents. Yeah. Uh, my hot seat's watching the Philadelphia Phillies. So Keith Hernandez, the broadcaster for the Mets, he said on the Mets broadcast tonight that he asked SNY to not make him call games against the Phillies because he doesn't like watching them play. Whoa. Talk about an alpha move. I love movie. Keith Hernandez. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> an OG. Crazy. Yeah. Could you imagine? One day, if I'm fortunate enough to call the NFL, they assign me Commanders, Bears, just two teams. And I'm like, no. Yeah, you, like should, you should play. Yeah, as examples. Yeah. Like yeah. two I mean, teams you, you don't like watching play? Two random games. Yeah, two random, random teams. Actually, yeah. if you ever are calling NFL games and you get the Commanders and, and Bears, can you just, before the game, pull the cord on the truck so we don't have to watch it? <laughs> yeah, actually. That would be the nice I, thing. I'm going to give you a uh, U-Haul filled with fertilizer that <laughs> you can drive into the stadium <laughs> yes. beforehand. Yeah. Please. Like, that would be the nice <laughs> thing to do. Yeah, no, I'm, I would be just fortunate spare, to call spare NFL, the, any spare NFL the nation. Game. Yeah. So I would never say no to any. Yeah. Yeah. But say no to that. Give me 16 Browns versus 0 and 16 Lions. The two teams on a Listen, field together. Jake, you don't want to do it. that first. That would be like a porn star do doing that. anal on their first scene. Like, you don't. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? And he is a butt guy. Yeah. Come on. You got to. Come on. Where are you going to go? I would still enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> it's an oh, opportunity. It's an opportunity. Okay. There it is. Jake said he would still enjoy it. It's anal. an opportunity to get better. <laughs> You know what? Like, there is a probably like a zero point zero 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 one percent chance that everybody involved with Thursday Night Football gets COVID during the week that the Bears are playing against the Commanders this year. Yeah, and they're like, "What can we do?" Next man up. And I World hope Bears, Bears. I hope they play this clip. Yeah, and they're like, "Look how wild this is." Yeah. they talked about it before. I'm ready to go. What a story that would be. And then, and then, is, and then, your whoever you're broadcasting with is like, "So, the anal thing is still on the table." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and my cool throne, a popular guy on the podcast these days, Sean McVay. So after yes. we put him on our, our Mount Rushmore, he got a contract extension. Coincidence? Yeah. yeah. Well, no. No. No, not no definitely not. Yeah. yeah. Obviously yeah. not. They, ESPN also did a profile on him. The photo shoot. I know. 
doesn't help. Yeah. He also, I was reading it. <laughs> that was his idea to pose like his that. His hands too, are behind way. his back. Yeah. His head. I was reading the, the profile and it was just like, Sean McVay is a psycho. I was like, yep. We knew that. I don't like how I don't like how he got drunk and decided to trade away Jared Goff. Yeah, that, that was, was not my cool. big takeaway from that him. That was not cool. He was like, I had a bunch of tequila and then came home and I said, I got on Facetime with the GM and said, we need to let our nuts hang. Let's trade for Matthew Stafford. Yeah, it was a bad idea. He, I, they would have won the Super Bowl Super Bowl by more. Yeah, if Jared Goff was their quarterback. There also was an anecdote in it where he was moving houses, like he was upgrading, and it was basically you know his life is changing. He got married. And I guess he didn't want to. Move, he his wife didn't want him to move the uh, basketball hoop, the pool hoop, uh, to the new house. It's like what's what's the point of being rich if you can't have a fucking hoop in your pool? Mm -hmm. Like that's fun. Yeah. So Sean McVay, I don't know. It's like Gordon Bombay. Put the fucking beach ball out on the ice or get a have second, fun. Get a second pool. Yeah. Just for like full Just, court. Yeah. Pool basketball. Yeah. Get a slam ball court too. Hell yeah. Why not? That's the whole point of it. Okay. Good job, Jake. Um, are you guys ready for Jake Plummer? I'm this ready. was an awesome interview. Oh, I wanted to say one thing before we get to Jake Plummer. Uh, Jake texted me after. So the Umbo company that he owns, the bars, he uh, forgot to mention he co-owns it with Rashad Evans, former mm -hmm. UFC. Uh, I think uh, he had a belt. Yeah, he, yeah. Was a, he was a huge UFC guy. So uh, they're doing that together. Um, check it out. We should have Rashad on sometime. But Jake Plummer... Uh, Great interview. Maybe the coolest guy ever. Cool, coolest guy ever. Great interview. Before we do that, PFT, you got a quick word. Before we get to Jake the Snake, I want to talk to you guys about our great friends over at Shopify. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big business. So upstarts, startups, and established businesses alike can sell everywhere, synchronize online and in-person sales, and effortlessly stay informed. Shopify has the tools and the resources that make it easy for any business to succeed from down the street to around the globe, reach customers online and across social networks with an ever-growing suite of channel integrations and apps, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and more. You can synchronize your online and in-person sales, gain insights as you grow with detailed reporting of conversion rates, profit margins, and beyond. It's more than a store. Shopify helps you grow. This is possibility powered by Shopify. Go to shopify.com slash take, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash take right now. Shopify.com slash take. And now here's Jake Plummer. This Grit Week interview is brought to you by Coors Light. We are, I'm, we're welcoming on uh, the man, the myth, the legend. It is Jake the Snake Plummer. We are in, I don't even know what is, is this a mushroom refrigerator? I don't know what the technical term is yeah. for where we are sitting right now. I want to set the stage for the people why they might hear some drilling or something in the background. <laughs> What's this room called? This is, thanks for, ha thanks for being here, by the way, yes. in my favorite room, uh, surrounded by the lovely reishi mushroom, which is my favorite. This is a fruiting room, basically, fruiting where room. we bring them out of the dark room uh, that, that, you know, is low light. Um, constant temperature, kind of cooler, just trying to recreate what they would be under the ground in my, their mycelial network before they come out. And then we introduce oxygen and humidity, and then they come out of the bags. Once we cut them open, they want oxygen, so they just whoosh, come right yeah, out. It's beautiful. It's, yeah, yeah, it is. You said they're, they're reishi mushrooms. What are reishi mushrooms? Reishi are mushrooms considered the, the mushroom of immortality. That sounds, I'm in. Yeah. Uh, a lot of vitality. There's a link from heaven to earth. Uh, back in, in China, they call it Ling Zi, and, and the emperor would actually behead you if he found you going anywhere but to the palace with a reishi on your body. So uh, they've been used in, in uh, a, lot of, a lot of spiritual work. The shamans, a lot of shamans they've found buried have reishi uh, necklaces or reishi on their, on their, you know, in their tomb mm -hmm. and where they've been buried. So very grounding mushroom, um, you know, very good for you really i should say like a blanket over your central nervous system yeah basically yeah. yeah yeah just a nice calming effect and and really one of my favorite mushrooms the one i take every single day it's helped me with uh i don't have really bad allergies anymore so yeah we could go on and on but yeah. this is a beautiful fruiting room one of three that we have here at michael love farms so we want to talk about everything jake your football career the mushrooms everything um but we start every interview grit week with a simple question what does the word grit mean to you and it can, you can take it any direction you want. 
It, it's the worst when you're camping and you get some food, you take a bite and you start chewing and there's like somehow some campfire <laughs> dirt or yeah, drink. And you're that's like, great. Oh, that that's is great. great huh? Yes. That's yes. what I think of immediately is just something like that. <laughs> yeah. What about in football terms? Yeah, grit. I mean, grit is just like being kind of tough, nasty, showing up when you need to every time and like, uh, kind of being coarse and tough and getting after yeah. it. You know, when you have to change, you got to be able to dig deep. Grit is where you got to go to. You got to go down and get that dirt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good answer. Is there somebody that you played with in the course of your career that you would say, like, that's the grittiest dude? Ooh, man. There, there were so many. I mean, just guys that you could count on, tough dudes that got it done. Mike Anderson was a guy I played with. Yeah. Uh, a running back, fullback. I mean, just tough. Big he dude. Really, yeah, just solid uh, ex-Marine. So he was like, he, he could go where he needed to go to, to, to get it yeah. when you needed it. You know, like, hey, it's fourth and one. We need this. I, I'm going to give it to Mike Anderson. Yeah. And Ruben Drones. Those are two running backs to play with. And Larry Sinners. I mean, I could go on and on. You know? yeah. yeah. Grit goes in a lot of, lot of different depths with certain players. But when I think grit, grit too, I think kind of like, kind of like a, not dirty in a, in a bad, like, bad way, but in dirty and just like a guy that doesn't mind bloody yeah. dirt. Getting after it. Get that, that extra yeah, yard. Got yeah. that dog in him. Yeah. Nasty. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, your, your career is fascinating. I, I want to start at the end, actually, because I was reading a story, the, the Sports Illustrated story that you had out, I don't know, like seven or eight years ago, talking about your retirement, and you left on the table. John Gruden flew to you trying to get you. You got traded to the Buccaneers. You were going to make, you know, $5 million, $6 million a year. And John Gruden flies to Idaho to have a meeting with you and your wife to try to convince you to play football. And you're like, no, I'm, I'm done. I, I, I don't really want to play anymore. Yeah. And guys look at that and they're like, what is this guy doing? Like he's 32. There's, you know, it's a dream job for a lot of people, but you always seem to march to a different, you know, your own, your own, the beat of your own drum. What, what went through your mind when you were like processing, like, do I want to move to Tampa Bay? Do I want to keep this career going? Or I'm just I'm ready to walk away. Yeah, I mean, interesting lead up to that. In, in 2005, we had our best season, my best season ever in the NFL, and we lost to the Pittsburgh Steelers in the AFC Championship game. I had plans to go to the Super Bowl that year, to be the MVP, to hold the trophy, and on the stage, turn to everybody and say, hey, it's been a great ride. Peace out. Wow. Oh, shit. I, would, I, wanted, I wanted a ring. I mean, that's what I was going for. I wanted to win a Super Bowl. I didn't want a ring. I mean, I wanted to win the Super Bowl. Right. A five-year-old, six-year-old, that was my dream. So if I was going to do that, then I would be ready to be that dream, done, check that off, let's go. It didn't happen, so I came back that 10th season. Kubiak left. It wasn't the most smooth coming into the season. There was, you know some miscommunication between me and Mike Shanahan. Yeah. Uh, and then I was made an example of being not committed to the team. And if you recall, that's when we had drafted Jay Cutler in the off season. So the crack and the crack had been formed right there of like, okay, my team knew I was committed. My coach tell me you should go there more often. You look great in practice. So I took some time off, get ready for my 10th season, you know, and uh, it didn't go so well. I ended up getting benched for Jay. Jay came in and, and played as a rookie it was hard at first, but then I kind of realized, like, this is my, this is my time to enjoy this. Enjoy yeah. these last five, six games, ride this out, and then be ready to retire. And no one knew. I'd already made my mind up during the season. And then New Year's Eve, when, when we, you know, we had the awful thing happen to Darren Williams, yeah. you know, that was kind of a real solid, like, yeah, get, it's out. get yeah. out of here. I'm done. And that's crazy. So they traded you to the Bucks, And so John Gruden could have come and said anything, and you would have. Yeah, I was done. Yeah. I was at the time with my fiance. We were getting married that summer. I was ready to start traveling. I was just done. And, I, and you can't really take a break. Like, right. You, can't, you can. You could take a break and then retire and then come back. But I always thought that was kind of foolish. Like, why couldn't I have just said, hey, let me go. I'm going to take a year, maybe two years off and come back and play for Kubiak down in, down in Houston. Right. So, you know, but that doesn't happen. Right. You, know, you right. can't break that, that you know, continuation of the game. Yeah. Right? And so, uh, I was ready to go. And retirement, they had no chance. They, yeah. they, they were just barking up the wrong tree at That's that funny. moment. <laughs> so they, they traded for you, and you're like, no, I, I already told you I wasn't going to play. Did he try to convince you? Even oh, yeah. You they pulled out all the stops. They, it was like a recruiting trip again. They came up. They were talking about donating millions of dollars to my foundation and like everything I could imagine, anything I wanted. And mm -hmm. I just told them, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to play. I'm done. I just, in my heart, I was done. It was time to move on. My body was beat up. I, mm -hmm. I, was, I was not in good shape physically. 
and mentally also was pretty much you know that that whole limelight and being I had social anxiety i couldn't go out very many places without like Oh great! Someone's looked at my looked at me. Here goes there goes the rest of my night. You know, right, yeah. right. I, I can't hang out with my with with Tony or any of these yeah, guys yeah. on the team with any of my buddies because now there's 15 guys coming over and infiltrating, coming to talk to me, and my buddies all take off, and it's like, damn, yeah. you know. So it wore on me a little bit, like just the being in social I, I, settings. I respect the clarity though to to know for a fact because a lot of guys I think they don't know when they want to retire. Yeah, it's always up in the air, but it seems like you had. You know, you were crystal clear. You knew what you wanted, and you just did it. That's I think that's very cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it was just something in my heart I felt was right, and I've always kind of gone on what what I feel. Um, you know, as an eighteen year old going to ASU, how did I know? I just felt like it was a good place to go. Like, yeah. never heard of ASU much. The coach said, "If you come here, I've got the pieces in place to win a national championship." The only coach that told me that was Bruce Snyder. I mean, in my gut, if he's telling me that, I want to see if he's right. But my gut also told me, go down here and, and make, a, make a name for yourself. Do yeah. something special somewhere where it hadn't been done in a long time. Yeah, so the drilling, by the way, like we said, we are yeah. in. This is the coolest <laughs> backdrop we've ever had. So if you hear the drilling, it's worth it because you should watch on the YouTube. Um, but PFT is right. Like a lot of guys, the, the saying goes, like, the game retires you. You don't retire from the yeah. game. I love the story, though, that your uh, retirement press conference, you did it at the Denver Athletic Club. You, you gave your speech. You didn't let anyone ask any questions. Then you walked down the hallway and played handball with your yeah, brother. Yeah. Is that exactly how it went? Um, basically. That's, I mean, that's one of the coolest ways to retire. <laughs> yeah, you know, I didn't want to make a big scene. just wanted to go about my the rest of my life and get moving on it. Uh, the only thing I didn't do was wear my handball gloves and my goggles when I think back. Yeah. <laughs> but I was, like, going straight in to get warmed up and go play. You know, it was just a time to move into a new phase. For 10 years, I'd played at the highest level. For four years prior to that, I'd played at the sec, you know, in, in the Pac-10. And then, you know, since I was 12 years old, was playing football. So it, was, it took up a lot, lot of my life. Yeah. And I was missing out on things. My cousins would get married or someone would get married in August. And I had, I'm the only guy not there. So it was pulling me to be with my family. It was pulling me to, to go explore the world, to go travel. Because I really didn't, couldn't cut loose when I was playing. I felt like singular focus. You know? Yeah. But once that was over and I wanted to get married, have some kids, and I had life to go live. Yeah. Know, football, it's always going to be with me yeah. forever. Uh, but, but for me, there's so much more in life to go experience and do. You mentioned um, the Pac-10 and, you know, playing for national championship. It was a funny moment on the bus because we're – PFT and I are both 37. So I remember watching that Rose Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> some guys on the bus are a little younger. And I said out loud, I was like, he was 100 seconds away from a national title. Yeah. Everyone's like, wait, what? And it's like something that you were that close. The Rose Bowl, if you don't remember, Jake Palmer had a 11-yard touchdown run with like a minute and a half left to put Arizona State up four over Ohio mm -hmm. State. Only they would have been the only undefeated team that year because Florida had lost, and you were that close. Is that I mean, like after that moment, after that run, were you like, this is it? We got it. No, we got it. I was never really. I was never. I knew what the game was like. I've been in too many games where you, oh yeah, we got it. But the whole sideline, people were celebrating, screaming, national champs, and I, you, you don't see it, but you can see me on the bench standing up. I stood up on the bench because I was telling my teammates like. Get, get the fuck away from me. Get out of here. Right. Mm -hmm. we're, this game ain't over. Look at the clock. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Stop saying we're national champs. It started pissing me off because it happened a couple other times against U of A at home. Some alumni came behind the bench. We're beating them. There's seven minutes left. What happens? They're like, a couple of the alumni, there's no, no better feeling than beating the U of A at home. I turned. I said, hey, you, I told them to get off the field. He said, get, get out of here. Yeah. We'll bring that bullshit down here. Yeah. My teammates, I was like, come on. But sure enough, the crack had happened. You let that down. So I never – I didn't stop. If you remember the tail end of that game, Lindsey Jackson caught a dig route, and I was screaming timeout. And by the time he hit, hit the ground, it was 0-0. Zero, zero, the clock hit zero. But we were at about the 33-yard line. We mm -hmm. could have tried a, t a field goal to tie it. Yeah, which would have been incredible because I think you got the ball back neither like team 19 wanted seconds. To, yeah, yeah. neither team wanted to stop playing that. Yeah. That was a phenomenal game. Yeah. Beautiful day. Missed real – Real mystical. There's nothing yeah. better than the Rose Bowl. And just to be that close, I mean, it, you know, obviously it was a different era where the national championship, that's the other part of it, the national championship was decided by voters, yeah. where it's like you don't even, you, you know, there's a world where you could win that game and they wouldn't even vote you for, there would have probably been yeah. writers that voted well, for Florida. Well, when we lost, I know Florida State, a couple of the guys, I met them down at the, 
some events and they, they kind of pissed me off because they're like, hey, man, thanks for losing that game. Yeah. Like, what? Because <laughs> right before they were going to play Florida State or – yeah, Florida. Florida they're yeah. going to play Florida State. Florida saw that they, if they win, they're national champs. They yeah. knew right then. If we beat Florida State, we're national champs. Yeah. Had we won, there would have been a big dispute. Yeah. yeah. We were outright. If you're 12-0, and 0, you're a national champ. Yeah, you but, should be if you're the only undefeated team. You know, I trusted my instinct. I got from being a young kid at Capitol High School in Boise, Idaho, to follow a coach that gave me the confidence that I needed, and we, we almost won a national title. So yeah. I believe that with the people around me, if I set my mind to something and they believe too, we all like push for the same thing that anything is possible. Yeah. And I'm now taking that into my real life where, okay, what do we want to do here? Do we want to make millions of dollars selling mushrooms? No, not one bit. Do I want to bring this to people's attention and let them know there, is a, a be- there might be a better way to approach your health and wellness? Yes, and I'm lining up with hundreds of other people that feel the same exact way, which means something, you know, something big, something good is, is going to be around the corner. Just, yeah. 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 Goodness. All goodness. It's great. Yeah. Um, I, I do want to talk a lot about the mushrooms in a, in a little bit, but as far as the, the football stuff goes, so you, you're the big man on campus at ASU. You are like the guy there. And then you get drafted to Arizona. Was there a part of you that was like, I would like to maybe get outside of this area, maybe not play in the same stadium. There's a lot of pressure that goes along that, you know, like people that used to come watch you in college, they're asking for tickets, that sort of thing. Like, were you, were you excited to play for Arizona or did you want to go somewhere else? To be honest, I wanted to go somewhere else. Yeah, I was ready to, to, to just experience a new city and maybe something bigger than Boise and then Tempe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, something a little bit more, you know, a little more uh, like a Chicago or New York or a big city, you know, yeah. like a big, big city. I'd never lived in anything like that. And I thought it would have been fun to get drafted. Uh, but I also was looking for teams that I think, you know, I wanted to win a Super Bowl. That's really what I wanted to do. And it didn't become a part of, like, an actuality or an actual possibility until after my senior year. Then I let that come in. Mm-hmm. But prior to my senior year, I wasn't going to ball that year to try to get in the league. Yeah. I had no concerns about the league. That didn't even matter to me. What mattered was winning the national title. So I looked up – before we do interviews, I try to look up, like, what I've written about someone. And I had uh, – I said Jake Plummer – is the greatest naked bootleg uh, quarterback of all time. When you ran that play, when you ran play action and you're out there, were you like, because I, I feel like your game, you love throwing on the run. Yeah. Were you, did it feel like, hey, let me get out in space? Like, I, just, I just have memories of like Broncos, Cardinals, even Arizona State where it's like you're, you would get out there and it's like, uh oh, this is over. Like Jake yeah. Plummer's got his space. Well, thank you for that. I, yes. loved, I loved doing that. I really can't be called the best because I never actually did it fully naked yeah <laughs> so i mean had i been true. able to actually really fully we have a I football did, if you want to try i yeah. might have to get that done here in the next little bit and get it on film somehow and say now i am definitely the best naked bootleg quarterback uh it before it became um something we really did very well here in denver which obviously we had a great running game we had linemen that were sacrificing their bodies moving that stretch zone run west coast style you know I, that that boot was just dangerous and what Kubiak did was he rolled me to my left because not a lot of quarterbacks could throw rolling to their left. I actually felt like I could throw better rolling to my left. I felt like I could create more torque, more velocity. But see, this all started on the, on the playground. Where yeah. it, was, it wasn't, okay, we're running stretch boot left. It was, I'm not going to let you catch me. You're catching me. You're fast. I better learn how to throw on the run, yeah. running really fast. So that's how I learned how to do it. And then it just became an art form after that. It was an art yeah. form. I loved watching you do that. Yeah. Like, that was the play. It was, I mean, every, anything could happen. And it's, it was a lot of fun to get out in space because then you could throw it or you could run. And yep. you could use your eyes really good, too. I could be looking back here knowing that Rod's running a 20-yard comeback. And if I keep my eyes in here, all I got to do is go like that mm-hmm. on the run. And it's nothing. It's a simple completion. And then if there's nothing there, you can tuck it and run. Yeah. Um, yeah, I missed that part probably more than anything. Rolling to my left, trying to thread one between a couple oh, linebackers. It was beautiful. I love happened. to hear that. They're running full speed, and they're yeah. not thinking the ball's going to rip right past their helmet to a guy right behind them. And the beauty of you know Mahomes, I think that's really a beauty of his, is he throws him throws the ball from all different angles. And yeah, yeah. That the that, boot, that makes fun. me very happy <laughs> that like if you had one thing you miss about football, it's like running the bootleg. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was so great. Does, does time so slow down for you when you're on the run? You're about to throw. Uh, not really. It's just, yeah, everything's moving. So it's neat though. Cause I'm moving this way and they're all coming with me. So people think, how do you do that? Well, you're just throwing at a stationary target. Yeah. We're both running at the same speed. I'm throwing it. He's stationary to me. If I, 
Same as if we stopped. Right. Yeah. You know, it's different when you're stopping there running this way. You got to lead them. You got to anticipate. When you're running on the boot, you're on the same, same parallel. You're just... So that was fun. It was when I scramble, that was when there would be some panic. Yeah. And fear. Yeah. Oh, shit. Where's anybody coming from? Because yeah. you might think you're good, and all of a sudden, Palomalu comes flying out from behind somebody right. and drills you. I always think that uh, you, you looked even a lot cooler when you started to do the bootleg once you grew your hair up a little bit. Like <laughs> yes. that, that added yeah. an extra element to it. Was it flying out? Yeah, right it was like there's there. a wild man out, out in space. Yeah, that, that's true. Good point there. I did that. You know, that was a, that was a year after when Pat got killed, and mm-hmm. um, everybody just was, was so... Uh, you know, struck by him and his, his genuineness as far as like his patriotism and going to the fight for our country. But really before that, he was such a unique individual that imprinted, left a huge imprint on all of us, teammates, friends. Um, so I, I, I just started growing my hair out and I had my beard going and I saw his, his widow Marie and she's like, wow. And she was touching my face. Like you kind of resemble Pat just because of the beard. Mm -hmm. So I was like, God, I can bring her some comfort give her a hug. And then I just, I started doing it. And then people wanted to talk shit about it. I just said, well, I'm doing it for Pat. And then they'd stop. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, sure. oh, that's cool. right cool. that's really? why I grow mine out too, is <laughs> yeah. for Pat. Tillman, Tillman, in case yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people talk about Pat and, and when they talk about him, a lot of focus, I think deservedly so is paid to, you know, his final acts and, and his military service, but you knew him, you were great friends with him for years before that. What was he like as a person, as a friend? He's one of the, he's a, you said it right there a friend. I mean he really was a, you say you have friends and you guys know probably who your your friends are really when times matter and you, something happens you get phone calls or you get someone stop by those are your friends and Pat was like that to so many people. He really had an uh, a real special way of of connecting with people anybody. I mean you go on ASU's campus you could find. 10, 15 people that would be obscure on the back walls, janitors, whatever you say, just in the, in the shadows that, that probably knew Pat at a deep level because he just was intrigued with humans. And when he would sit down with you, he was genuine and authentic and extremely knowledgeable, very well could think for himself, never was thought for. And uh, yeah, it was a great friend. He called me before he left for his last deployment to check on me after I'd gone through a pretty monumental change. I almost got married. It didn't work out. He was calling to check on me to see how I was doing when I mean, a real friend would have been calling him or going to see him. Right. Like, Dan, mm-hmm. I might not see you again, right? You're going to war, really. You're not just going to play the Buccaneers. Right. You're actually going to war. Yeah. Did, you, did he talk to you at all before he made the decision to leave the NFL? No. And so, so he, but were you shocked at all? Or were you like, no, that's Pat? No, I had some insight from my, uh, a teammate of mine that his brother – uh, and Pat had talked. His brother had been in special special forces and uh, special ops, and so he talked with him. And so before the decision was made, uh, this coach at the time came and said, "You need to talk to Pat. He's about to do something, you know, kind of crazy." I was like, "Well, yeah, that's Pat. Tell me right. what's up." He's like, "Well, he's thinking about going into basic training and, and becoming a ranger." I was like, "Okay. I mean, <laughs> what do you want me to do? Yeah. Right. I'm not going to stop him. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. I mean, if his fiance Marie, his wife, the t- before they you know, hadn't gotten married, she can't. I think they just got married. She can't tell him to stop him. And mm-hmm. what am I going to do? So, just what, sit, I, I prayed for him and wished him, my, you know, the best I could, you know, to go over there and come back safe. Sad that he didn't come back. Um, he's left a huge impression on so many people, and definitely inspired a lot of humans. I try to, I try to not talk too much about Pat because I feel like he lived his life at such a high level. Mm-hmm. Um, for me to talk for him, I'm trying to raise my game so yeah. I can actually mm-hmm. be at that similar level. You could never be at a level of someone like him, but in my own way to try to be authentic and genuine and real, carry on his tradition that way, not by like trying to hike every 14er in the world. Yeah, uh, but that's mm-hmm. that's cool. I respect that because there's, you know, when you have a hero and everyone's talking about it, there, there's times when it feels like certain people are trying to almost take advantage of their legacy and like yeah. step in for their legacy. And like, you, that's a true friend yeah, to but, be like, yeah, he was one of my great friends. And when our past presidents trying to use him in, in some way or shape or form, it's like, Oh yeah. And you then I think, know well, yeah. Pat might've really loved Trump. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You can't Pat speak was so for him, wild. Yeah. That you never know. He might right. have like had some respect in some way for him. Maybe not his ideals and his, his, his way about things, but just his, I think Pat would have, Weirdly enough, respected Trump for the fact that he didn't really – he did what he wanted to do. Right, you right. Know, like in life, what do you do? Oh, I'm not going to yeah. go do that because you don't want me to. That's a life of misery. Yeah. Know? 
Yeah. And even though I'm not a fan of our past president, but you know, who knows what Pat would have thought, but yeah, yeah I, I just think for yourself, you know, think I, I like and, and move and do the things you want to do. Um, I also know Pat on the, on the other side of like, not this hero, but down, down a dirty life, you know? Right. So your teammate, when I looked at him, he's yeah. just, it gave me a, a much more of an appreciation for these soldiers that sacrifice their lives, that sacrifice their livelihoods to go fight for the freedom for our country. And then when you see their pictures of these dead soldiers in the paper, it just resonated more of like, that's somebody else's best friend, that's someone's son, yeah. that's some other badass dude that wasn't a football player, but is still making the world a better place. Yeah. So Pat used his stage, and now his, he's, a le- he's a legend. Yeah. And to have been tight friends with a legend, like, you know, that's amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. I miss him. But yeah. I'm going to try to, you know. One of these days, I might see him if I eat enough mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Not these ones. These are non-psychedelics. Yeah. Let's, yeah. But, Let's yeah. talk about some of the mushroom <laughs> stuff, though, because that's a good segue. I mean, it's... I was actually thinking, yeah. I was like, how are we going to segue out of this? Because I did it for us. Yeah. Yeah. No, you did it yeah. for that's us. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to... Actually, my other segue was going to be, remember that time you flipped off the Broncos fans? Yeah. What, what happened there? I had, I had a funny letter. I just got a letter from a lady who was like sent that little clip and then told me a whole story of how I, I did all these bad things to her in 1991 in Tempe. And I'm like, that's weird. I didn't get to Tempe till 93. <laughs> so I got this letter from some lady who has assumed that this person that did all these wrong things to her was me. But that's no, crazy. Me. Yeah. The, the finger. I mean, that I, I feel that's like I, I like there. those moments because I always think like we put athletes in a in a spot that they like they're humans. They have a bad day at work. Human emotions happen. Like there, we, we, you know, I don't. You probably don't follow like baseball very closely, but there was a Phillies player this year who the fans were booing him. He's like, he, you could see him whispering, "I fucking hate this place." Mm. And then afterwards, they interviewed him. He's like, "Yeah, I said it. Like I was having a really bad day, and it sucked. Yeah. And like I was pissed off that I was had a bad day. And so like those moments flicking people off. I, I don't know. I respect it. They just put some weird uh, pressure on athletes. Like we were just supposed to be happy and perfect all the time right um, if anything it just shows that we're going through it too you know i'm feeling it but if you step up for what you do and you say you know i i got caught in the moment and didn't do that right that was the wrong reaction hopefully i don't do it again um, they train us though to react they don't really train us how to deal with that kind of stuff so when you are in the moment and you're you're in it you might not think oh wait this might hurt my sponsorship deal with xfinity like nah you're like yeah. yo you're saying some raunchy stuff how come you're saying this raunchy stuff and wearing Broncos attire? Right. I got something for you. I'm going to fix my hat. <laughs> it was very subtle. It yes, was smooth. It was. Just happened that the camera was right on me. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, I, I slipped up, but they don't train us for that. And then when you get done with the game, they're not helping you decompress from that, um, that kind of masculine, like, react. I'm going to kick your ass. You mess with me. You mess with us. You know, that, that's like we're programmed to react and not necessarily think and, and take a few minutes to – think something through right yeah so right what was that like because i, I think you're 100 percent right that if you if you play professional sports especially in the nfl like there's so much aggression every mm-hmm. day you you live in a sink or swim world if it's against your opponent or if it's somebody that is coming up behind you that might take your job you have to be aggressive you have to be violent all the time and violence gets rewarded but then after you leave what was that process like for you like you said decompressing, but leaving that environment where it's competitive all the time, and now it's just like, okay, blank slate. Go do what you want to do. Yeah, you know, handball was a big part of that. It was something active that I could go do, and I could hang out with the guys. We could sit around you know, at the club and the place where I played in Sandpoint. We could have a few cold ones afterwards, which was really nice. So I didn't miss that camaraderie. And I think a lot of guys, they just don't fill that void with anything uh, except football again. You know, And sometimes that just keeps – igniting the beast you know especially if you didn't walk away from the game like i walked i took off i i ran away actually i was healthy enough to run away from the game yeah you know uh to choose to not play is very rare in the nfl when there's people that would do anything to play uh so a lot of times they're dealing with that like being told i don't like you anymore you're no good right or there's someone better even though he's not we're going to tell you who he is and make you feel like you're no good anymore so guys some guys go and they take care of that post career and they work through that and they, you know, get counseling and they go through a lot of them get are bankrupt, get divorced, uh, and fall into, you know, hopefully not fall into anything bad or some addictions because what do you, what do you feel that void with? And yeah. so for me, I, I filled it with handball. I moved up to Sandpoint. I did coach high school football and that was a beautiful thing to see, you know, little Billy with his chin strap tightened. And I'm like, 
you're, you're a ninth grader. You're never, you're not even going to see the field, but he was right there ready. Mm-hmm. You know, it brought back that love of the game. You yeah. know, like these kids played it cause they weren't going to college. They played it cause they wanted to go hit somebody and get out some aggression and be playing under the lights on Friday night. You know, that's a good feeling. So it brought that love back to me, that feeling of why I played football. Um, you know, and I traveled a lot and I, you know, but I didn't do any spiritual work. I didn't do any real deep dives. I didn't do anything that I, if I, if I had a recipe for that, I would go back and do all of that so that I would have found my path a lot sooner instead of, you know, down the road. I'm on a great path now, but it took, took some tough times. Yes. So handball, how did you get into handball? Cause I, I, I remember even when you were playing football, I knew like Jake or, uh, I knew Jake Plummer also outstanding handball player. <laughs> yeah, it was a game my dad played. He was an Idaho State champ and a Washington State champ back in the day in the Opens. And so he played it uh, where he worked. They had a handball court, and he picked it up by some friends. And then he taught you know, all of us. I mean, I was a baby crawling around onto the court chasing the ball when he was, when he was playing in tournaments. And so my brothers b- both played, and naturally I played. And it was an off-season kind of like we'd see my dad. We'd try to play some handball together. And I played in tournaments when I was – 12, 13, 14. It was a mental mess because it's a hard, hard game. But then as I progressed through high school, I didn't play a lot. College, very little at all. And then when I got into the pros, I got reintroduced to the game a little bit as an off-season conditioning. And just really the lateral movement, the spatial awareness, the mental toughness, hand-eye coordination, and you have to use your left side so it brings back balance to your body. Uh, you know, it became a really good way for me to, to go out and, and – Kind of do something in the off season instead of golf every day, and yeah. go work out in the weight room, and then yeah. go run on a field when it's 110 out. Like I, I got sick of that stuff. So handball was a chance for me to cross train. Yeah, I mean, I, I when I first read the story, like, oh, Jake Plummer's like a really good handball player, and you were, I think you were trying to go like pro, right? No, like you no. were, See, there was a moment that you were. They were using me. For, oh, okay. The, you know, the game was using my. But name. it helps the yeah. game. Yeah, I got to play with some pros, but no, nah, when I play a pro, and they would go. Three quarters, they'd beat me 21 to one if I happen to maybe get a, a serve and, and, and get a point on them. They're, they're good. It's like a pro golfer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can golf and shoot in the 80s. And you go with a golfer, 72, and you're like, holy yeah. shit, these guys are good. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. yeah. Different level. So, no, I never was trying to be a pro. I just was out trying to get a, some light shed on a great game for these kids that are singularly focus, focused on one sport, and maybe they're already specializing at age 14. I'm like, God, come play handball. Yeah. So I taught a lot of kids how to play handball, and they might not play again until they're in college. So I got got when I read the story because it was the story like he's trying to become a professional handball. But yeah. I mean, it was good for handball because yeah. I didn't even know. I always think handball, like there's the Olympic sport where they're running around and throwing it. Then there's also just uh, like the guys who play just – it's almost like squash, just one yeah. wall. Your handball is all four walls, well, right? Well, there's four wall, there's three wall, yeah. and there's one wall. So you would play four wall, right? Yeah, I just played in a three wall tourney this weekend. So four wall, you can just hit it off any – like I. Yeah, I mean it's the same rules as racquetball. Pretend I'm five, yeah. Same rules as racquetball. You got to let it bounce once, and when you hit it, it has – whatever it does, it has to hit the front wall. Okay, right? no so it can hit what, the back wall and the then ground. go to the front wall. Yeah, and there's other little intricacies involved in that. Like sometimes it can't hit four walls at once on a serve, or you got to. But it's basically just like back in grade school when you'd have a ball and a wall and a buddy. And you that sounds play awesome. Ball. Yeah, that yeah. sounds. Good. I, I really want to play. Throw in some beer, and guys are like, I mean, the crew I was with this weekend, it was like 95 degrees out. All they did was play handball and drink beer all day long. It's awesome. So, <laughs> so it's racquetball, but no racket, just your hand. Yeah, you use both hands. Yeah, it sounds yeah. so cool. I, it's I a mean. lot of fun. It's a tough sport. It's yeah. definitely like racquetball is appealing to everybody. But handball definitely is only only appealing to those that kind of like to get after it. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. grit. I'm in. Yeah, yeah I'm in 100. percent Yeah. So so now you've transitioned into into. Are you a mushroom farmer? How how should we describe what you uh, do? Here? I'm just a I'm a myco lover. Okay. And I just love mushrooms. Um, before the pandemic, a good buddy of mine, Del Jolly, who I had worked with at Charlotte's Web. If you recall, Charlotte's Web was the hemp oil company that Charlotte Fiji was a little girl who had. Uh, Dravet syndrome and she was not doing well with seizures her mother and her father fought hard to find the medicine and get it to her even though they were breaking the law federally they still administered it to her and the Stanley brothers went and found a bunch of hemp out in Kansas along the ditch banks and started extracting it and giving it to them and made a really highly potent very very um, you know worthwhile beneficial oil and so we did the work there already on a plant that was highly misunderstood and, and not many people knew the difference between THC and CBD or, you know, hemp, I should say. Um, 
Real similar, minus the high. It's psychotro- yeah. psychotropic high you get from smoking marijuana or THC, but hemp has tons of benefits. Together, at the right levels, uh, a very potent medicine. And- so, yeah, so the mushroom farming. Um, so let's first say the website so everyone can go check it out. Yeah, so- we're sitting here at Myco Love Farm, which is Myco Love dot farm yeah m y c o love dot yes dot com. so myco means mushroom and then my colorado since it's local and you got co can stand for a lot of stuff so myco love dot farm is where we're at now where we are growing medicinal functional mushrooms turkey tail lion's mane reishi and cordyceps these are new to a lot of the population here in the states in western medicine but they're long long-standing remedies and you know cures for a lot of stuff back east and in in uh, china and asia they've been using you know these beautiful fungi forever it's an entire kingdom mm-hmm. so when you or we say queendom but they have their own kingdom are they female fungi yeah they're just they're the mamas of everything yeah oh, cool so so what does it do like what is uh the the mushroom it's extract right it's oil that yeah. you're selling yeah it's a it's a dual extract alcohol water yeah so yeah, what so does it do like what what are the benefits like what if you know i'm very interested in this yeah because the fungal kingdom is you know they say anywhere from 2.2 million to 3.8 million of any sort of fungus around the world. We've only discovered and identified of fruiting bodies about 100 plus thousand. So we're just scratching the surface on what could be out there in the world. And if you believe that Mother Earth provides everything for us as humans to balance everything out, I believe that the fungal kingdom has everything we need in it to, to balance out any of the ailments or disease, disease that we have here in, in our country and in the world. So when you're working with these mushrooms, you know, they all do different things, but they all basically do the same thing. You know, they're here to help us. Yeah. And so reishi is one that helps with anxiety, the nervous system. Um, it's the mushroom of longevity. Uh, you know, there's, you know, the mushroom of immortality. Yeah. It helps with longevity, vitality, all sorts of stuff. And so in the world, we're under stress constantly. These lights right now are sending stress to us. So if you can protect yourself and put just something in your body that's a preventative form of, of maintenance, just like you put oil in your car and you put high lead, high leaded gas in your car because you want that thing to run well, we should do the same to our body. And that's why I take reishi every day. Yeah. yeah. I, I was watching this documentary a couple months ago about mushrooms and I didn't realize how complex the network of mushrooms on earth are. So they were making the, the statement that like, Mushrooms act as the Earth's central nervous system almost, where they pick up in changes in, uh, in the climate, in the temperature, in a lot, you know, the soil, all sorts of things. And then they actually communicate with other mushrooms through this complex, like, nerve network underground. Is that, is that am I describing it correctly? Because yeah, it blew my perfect. mind when I first heard about it. The, the, the mycelial network underneath the ground. And then the mycorrhizal network that goes into the roots of all plants. All living plants have a little thread, single cell hyphae of mycelium going up inside of them that communicates with the mother. Mm-hmm. It's, one, it's one whole thing. And that's why it's beautiful because these, th- these grow in nature, but we're able to do, do the same thing, replicate with an oak and soy holes combined together with some water to make a substrate that's basically like making a tree that would have fallen in the forest and then they come and decompose. They're the main. They're the big decomposers of everything that dies. Yeah. Um, they breathe in oxygen and breathe out CO2. They don't photosynthesize the sun, and they eat dead things. So there's a few similarities to humans. Yeah. yeah also. Yeah. Uh, but they're very bioavailable. Lion's mane is great for your brain for neuronal growth, basically for all all neurons in your body. Uh, lion's mane is one that we're going to have a lot of research done here soon. That's going to show that it's a, it's something that everybody should have in their daily regimen. It enhances your dream state too, so Ooh, you're like, yeah. you're dreaming pretty pretty amazing dreams, not like crazy wacky high, psychedelic type, but just like like Vivid, a dream like yeah. this. Like yeah. I'm in a room with mushrooms and a bunch of guys filming me, and like I'm here and I'm in it and I'm feeling like I'm there being interviewed. No, I, I'm literally it's feeling intense. like I'm in a dream right yeah, now. Too. Yeah, like yeah, I'm yeah, sitting in a dream, dream in a mushroom room. Sometimes I feel with the same yeah. 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 We're on Grit Week doing a podcast. Like, wake up. There's yeah. going to be millions of people maybe that listen to this. We've like, already that's... done this interview. I'm about to wake up because I we took some lion's mane with us. <laughs> and so this is actually 
Wednesday already. We got to talk about the show. This is a yes. dream. This yeah. is a dream. It's this a great dream, thing. though. So yeah, no, this you guys turned on the right road. Yes. Yeah. to get here. Yeah, was controlling you. Yes, got you here. So we're yeah. all fuck. Now I'm kind of fucked together. up. I'm hey, not like, gonna lie. Along, like, I'm actually along little. those same lines. Like, let, let's get into a little uh, bit because oh. <laughs> do you do you feel at all like you were destined to have this life that you've had? Because grow, I read a little bit about you growing up, and you were given the nickname Jake. Your name's not actually Jake. Yeah. Which is which is weird, but you were given the name, and you loved Jake. Uh, you lo- who was it? It was uh, Jake the Snake. It was uh, Ken Stabler. Kenny Stabler. Right? Ken yeah. Stabler Ken got Stabler. it. Got gave it. it to Jake the Snake. Jake the Snake to yeah. this Jake. So the snake. so like modeling. You know, ever since you were a kid, you looked up to Ken Stabler. You were an outstanding quarterback all the way through high school. Go to Arizona State. It feels like you've had like a, a perfect line from when you were a kid to what your career has been and where you're at right now. Do you feel like you were ever destined to do that? I've taken my hand off the wheel, really. Just to see where it goes. Um, as I was saying, with the work with with CBD, it it showed me the power that, not the power, not in a bad way, but the influence and power we have as athletes, if we stand in our truth and our and really stand with our heart open and communicate to people, we can help change the way they approach their health and wellness and how their lives are. So through the Charlotte's Web, we affected a lot of people. We affected a lot of people in a positive way. So I felt like. Wow, what a gift, you know. How do I do that now and actually do that in my own life? Like, I'm doing this, but I'm still struggling with things. I'm still trying to find my path. So hands off the wheel, the pandemic hits, and then mushrooms come into the picture by my buddy Dale Jolly, who kind of showed me, like, hey, this is nature. And I've always been about nature. I mean, I grew up in Sawtooth Mountains as a young kid. We've always been backpacking, and I find my peace of mind when I'm sitting by a stream or in, in trees or out in the mountains in the woods or around living, growing things. And so this just came around as another opportunity to take a misunderstood kingdom and educate people on the difference between psilocybin and lion's mane. Lion's mane does almost the same thing psilocybin does. There's some research that shows this, that it does most of the same stuff, clarity-wise, focus, your senses but without the psychotropic high. So right. it's like, these things are so diverse. We, I can't tell you anything that, what the, other than what I know and have experienced. And I know a lot more than you guys, but I know about that much compared to Paul Stamets or Robert Rogers, who've been doing this for 30 plus years. They are, mush, they are mushrooms themselves. You know? yeah. They're walking around, <laughs> they're mushrooms, they're spreading the spores. Yeah. So I've been, you know, the path that I've gotten to, no way did I ever expect to be farming mushrooms in Fort Lupton and extracting them and then also working with umbo another uh get umbo.com you can go there to check out our bars that have two and a half grams of mushrooms in them to try to introduce them to people because most people are like "Ooh, i don't like mushrooms they're gross all right we'll try this bar it's got two and a half grams of mushrooms of, of functional mushrooms in it wow this bar is amazing in fact it's better than any bar i've ever tasted on the market perfect well buy this bar check it out yeah now we're introducing another something that we've that we've eliminated from our complete diets for hundreds of years when we evolved we ate mushrooms it's a no-brainer that that's one of the food sources we had wherever you went come with me to the mountains and we'll go find some chanterelles there's food being grown by by pachamama by mother earth for us this is just remembering old knowledge and so it's fun to be again taking something misunderstood and bringing it out to the people to make them kind of scratch their head and go what the hell and then they're oh jake jake yeah jake he's not a wacko he knows his stuff i respect him from his days you know how he left the game i'm gonna check this out Mm -hmm. so it's an intense an intensely like i'm i'm very uh humbled by the ability to bring this to people because i've already felt and had many people's lives change already just by being able to get a better night's sleep yeah yeah damn i'm sleeping again yeah really sleeping i'm like yeah, what else has happened? I'm like, I'm up early now. I'm jogging. Now, man, I'm being my wife are smiling at each other. I'm like, things can change, but you just have to be ready to. You have to be open to it. Yeah, and I yeah. don't want here to force it on anybody. I'm just here to go. Hey, this is me. This is what I'm doing. Check it out. We should yeah. say now specifically, maybe just for Billy, but for anybody out there that might be like Billy. That doesn't mean that go into the woods and just find a mushroom and eat it. <laughs> no, no, just no. Want to, want to make that part. That there. is a good point. Yeah, yeah. there's they're, they're so dangerous. diverse. I mean, there's yeah. some that look exactly the same, but you have to do a spore print to know you know, if you can eat one spore or the print. other. So. Yeah. <laughs> What's that like? Yeah, you take the cap of the mushroom off and set it on a piece of paper, and then put a cup over it. You can do white paper or black paper, depending, because some spores, as you look around, there's a few spots where they're they're dark or they're light. So. Yeah, and then it just leaves. Every mushroom has its own print. Okay. Oh, wow. 
every human has our own fingerprint. It's like a snowflake. It's kind of funny. Yeah. There's another. There's another similarity. I think yeah. they are humans. I think you've you've successfully convinced me that. That we're related to mushrooms. I, I hope I can turn into one. Listen, I, all I'm going to say Dude, is you're, I want to eat one like come Mario and, and grow up to be seven feet tall. Come back every year in the forest. And yes. My kids can come find me and eat me. Like, There's dad. <laughs> <laughs> the, I mean, just based off vibe checks, I would say you got to like check this stuff out because you as a like your aura or vibe is just a very relaxed, sure, uh, assured person who's cool. just like, you know, this is my life and... Like I said, the the fact that you walked away from the game when you could have played and made millions more, it's also you're kind of a trailblazer because it's happening now. Yeah. Like guys are doing it now, but when it happened with you, it was like, what the hell's wrong with this guy? Yeah, thanks for noticing that and saying that. That's yeah. very nice. And you know, I'd never had a plan in place. I didn't plan to go to ASU and stand up after the season and and call out the entire team as a as a 170 pound freshman saying we could play better and these seniors. They need us right now. Like I didn't, I didn't have that plan. It just happened, you know. And so this is just another thing that's just come my way. I'm not a mycologist. I can't tell you everything about these things, but I got people surrounding me just like a great team, like I did when I played ball. I could do what I could do, but I needed a good right tackle. I needed a good punter. I needed somebody that would come and clean the locker room so after we made a mess, you know, so yeah. we could come back and have fresh, clear minds. So. I'm building the team, and I'm not necessarily the quarterback, but I'm just a part of it that's helping drive this thing. And yeah. If I can be authentic and genuine in how I approach this, then I believe that we're just going to help people become a little aware of yeah. a yeah. different way to look at life. You yeah. know? It, sick and tired of being sick and tired? Yes. Check it out. Check out yes. GetHumbo.com and MichaelLove.Farm. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, hey, yeah, whatever. It's, yeah. A, it's interesting because I think Big Cat's uh, – he, he's right. If you talk to any of your former teammates, they all love you. Yeah, like you've got a good relationship with them. I'm curious to know, like when you got when you got to the league, and it looks like you're probably going to be starting, and you get into that first game, and it's your first time in the huddle. Did you? I, I know that you didn't have anything planned out because you're not a plan out guy. Like you said, it's just like, like hands hand off, off the, the wheel, wheel right? Yeah. But do you remember what you said to the guys for that first time? Because making that first impression, I would have to imagine at that level in the huddle with another group of professionals is like that can be, you know, not a make or break moment, but that can have a pretty big impact on which direction things are going to go. So oh, yeah. do you remember what you said? <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm smiling. I know exactly. Right. We were in Philly playing in vet, the old veteran stadium. And so Kent Graham had been hurt that week prior. So Stony case started and I was his backup. It's week seven or eight, I think. Um, so yeah, I was like, man, I'm a play away from getting in this game. Holy smoke. So, Going into halftime, we were struggling. Coach says, hey, we're giving you the reins. And so, <laughs> sure enough, the ball gets punted down, down on the two-yard line in the bowl, in the bowl part of, this, of Veterans Stadium. And that was a whole circle. And yeah. Was, so we're right down. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, they're getting after it. it. I love, I love yeah. Philly fans. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. love yeah. them. They say the nastiest, craziest stuff. <laughs> and then after the game, they want to be your best friend yeah. and have you sign some stuff or whatever. But they're in it. So And the cheesesteak sandwiches, too. Yes, and part of my cheesesteak, uh, yeah. So I go into the huddle, and I know exactly what I said. You know, I mean, I was, I was ready for this. This was my chance to come out on the field. And we're on the two-yard line. What else did you say? I walked in and got into the huddle, and I said, we're going to take this motherfucker 98 yards. Who's with me? And they just like, yeah. And that's all I said. I said, let's go. And meanwhile, I'm looking over at Larry Sinners because it's TV timeout, and he kept looking at me like this. He's pulling his eyelid down. I'm like, you got something in your eye? He's like, No. I the tiger, baby. <laughs> I the tiger. <laughs> and then you, what was the, what so was we the result? You we went, went 98, 98 and scored. Yeah. I was going to say that would Man, suck right, if you threw right, an interception. Right. So <laughs> I came in and like, you know, yeah, these guys were needing some juice. Yeah. So I just, Clueless came in and said, let's go. We, th we threw like eight slant routes. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's all we threw. <laughs> slant, slant, and if it wasn't there, but we went down and we scored. I mean, this is the Arizona Cardinals too, which up until you started playing, like they hadn't had a lot of success, right? No. And you come in and you're like, we're going to take this motherfucker 98 yards. And then you, they probably are like, this guy's a god. Yeah. This god. God's yeah. Right Not there. necessarily that. They just felt like, no, okay. Like he knew. I you like, feel it. I, yeah, I, you I, feel, I feel the like There's a chance now, you know. Like he's yeah. going to bring the – he makes me want to do this. You yeah. Know? He may, he, 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 they feel that energy, you know. And no offense to Stoney or Kent, but they, you know, when you get drafted in the second round, there's a pretty good chance you're going to play, especially for an organization that had really hadn't had uh, – 
a franchise quarterback or someone to, to hang their hat on. And yeah, that, that, that year was big. 98 was huge. Yeah. We saved that team from being the L.A. Cardinals. I mean, yeah. they were LA, the L.A. Cardinals, if not for 98. Yeah, mm-hmm. and go to the playoffs. So, so yeah. you, the la- the, that was your first time being a backup. The next time you were a backup was your last game, right? Mm-hmm. And I read the story. <laughs> it's very funny. So um, it's a great story. Everyone should read it on Sports Illustrated. But Jake – essentially tells a story that he's the backup at first he was upset that he was a backup but then he realized like hey why don't i enjoy this like i'm gonna go out and enjoy the fans eating hot dogs at halftime so you get in the last game and you were just like fuck it i'm just gonna throw it deep and see what happens uh, no not at all I was, just, <laughs> I was rolling to my left and saw javon walker taking a break going deep and so i let it let it go i mean i think it ball traveled 50 plus yards in the air Right when it was coming down, he got tripped, and the guy came flying in and picked him off. So that was my last throw in the NFL, Yeah, <laughs> which I'm fine with. Yeah, yeah. right. Like- <laughs> I came to the league to try to make a play, and that's what I told when I walked by Shanahan. He's looking at me like, what? And I'm like, trying to make a play, coach. Yep. <laughs> when I sat down on the bench, and Matt, my coach, QB coach Pat McPherson comes over, and he starts to pull something out. I was like, yeah, you could get it. You could go ahead and get, get out of here. Get away. <laughs> Get out of here. I'm not talking to, to you anymore. I don't need to, study I don't need to tell you what I was doing. I mean, I was trying to make a play. Yeah, I wanted to win to the game. Play, Jesus Christ. Put Gunslinger. me in the game. We win that game. We go to the playoffs. I yeah. mean, it's just no offense to Jay either. It's just that was my team. You yeah. Know? And when I came back out, that energy was still there. You yeah. Know? I felt it. And it felt good to kind of like my last curtain call was a haymaker roll to my left yeah. trying to make a play. That's, he went out. I threw 161 TDs in the NFL. And I also threw 161 interceptions. Oh, that's wow. Awesome. That's that is sick. Awesome. Yeah. That's the definition of trying to make a play. I mean, <laughs> I came out even, man. I made a lot of good ones and some bad ones. You are the ultimate hands off the wheel guy. Like, that's so perfect that the universe ended your NFL career on that play yeah. with the same amount of touchdowns as interceptions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's kind of funny. There were about a good 10 of those, maybe, maybe a little more, were. Hail Mary's at the end of the first half with the Cardinals, too. Right, so right. keep in mind, I didn't throw it out of the end zone like a lot of QBs would for their rating. I was like, come on, let's get this TD. Make We're a play, throwing yeah. Hail Mary. I'm trying to make a play. Yes. I put it into the end zone, and there'd be a defensive guy would pick it off. So at least 10 of those. Even yeah. Dave Brown, my backup, was like, dude, throw those out of bounds. I'm like... Are you kidding me, man? If we get a touchdown going in, we come out, we get another touchdown, we're only down by 14 now. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of 28, we got down by 14 like that. I mean, I never gave up till the yeah. clock was over. So yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's what my teammates loved is yeah. I think that I just never let them be complacent. Right. How weird right. was it playing in the NFC East in Arizona? That's yeah, crazy, man. Yeah. We played some tough teams in some tough places. We traveled a lot. We flew a lot. Yeah. Those late, like a late game in Philly or New York, you get back – you know, early morning to Arizona and five and a half hour plane ride. No wonder these guys are wanting drugs after the game. I mean, mm-hmm. you're, you can't hardly f- just sit anywhere and then you got to sit on a plane for five and a half hours. I mean, it was, that was really tough. Yeah. Man. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So I had one last question. It's a rowback question. Promo code take, Q zips, polos, everything. Uh, go to rowback.com, R H O B A C K.com. Promo code take. This has been awesome. I wanted to um, – I read a story, and I want to confirm it because the guy doesn't get a lot of good publicity right now, Hugh Jackson. Mm-hmm. So clearly, you know, things didn't go well for him with the Browns. But I read the story that Hugh Jackson was the reason you went to Arizona State. Is that a fact? Not com- No. He was okay. a running backs coach when okay. I got there. I loved him. I mean, we were tight right off. Um, any coach that as I'm handing the ball off to the running back, he's running behind them through the holes, like helping them – hone their vision you know, I loved him his energy and everything but then he coached me um let me see my junior year he was my quarterback coach and that's a year I went from kind of I don't know kind of a sloppy mess into like I look I was legit yeah he, he legitimized my drop my footwork my delivery efficient everything I just got he he was amazing so fun to, to play for and to be coached by and yeah he he, he did it he didn't do as well as people think in Cleveland, but who the hell has? Yeah, that's you know, they, true. They didn't win games, but they were in games. But come on, man. You know, you can't coach like he wanted to coach without full reins. And yeah. So there's lots of, you know, backstory that goes into that. But I've always been a huge, huge, huge Jackson supporter. Great yeah. coach. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, th- thank you so much. This has yeah. been awesome. Right on. Is there anything thank else you'd like the audience to know about about the mushroom business, about what you're – do you actually – tell you what, can you do your top three mushrooms? Because you said mm. – Oh, man. You said that this one was number one, right? Yeah. You got to go with – reishi is it, definitely – it's not a gourmet. You can't eat it. So, I mean, you could, but it's real fibrous, very tough. You wouldn't want to eat 
reishi mushroom, but taking the tinctures is, is definitely good for your whole body. Uh, lion's mane is amazing and gourmet but wise cooking that is it's a, so good mm-hmm. it's like never had anything quite like this it's like seafood in a way kind of like fish fish without being fishy right mm-hmm. um and then after that i don't know how to pick one after that i mean i would probably say turkey tail which again is not one that's edible uh, it, grow, it grows on hard woods and it's it's extremely useful in antioxidant and prevent, prevention for cancer they use it to treat cancer in, in japan uh, use it as a, an additive to cancer treatment, which helps a lot of the people going through cancer and radiation uh, come out a little healthier. So that's another one that's just packed full of a lot of immunomodulating things that help yeah. your immune system fight things off. Uh, but those are probably my top three to take. Um, out, and, out and about, I mean, yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, I love witch's butter. It's a little orange gelatinous thing that comes out of trees that is really good for your respiratory system. Tremella. That's cool. They call it Tremella. Mushrooms have such cool names. Yeah, yeah they they're, they're, they're Latin tail, names are crazy. Butter. Yeah. Those are all the Aaron the Rogers loves is, witch's butter too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, you know, there's so many mushrooms out there, but I, I would say if I had to pick one because you can eat it is lion's mane. Lion's mane's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Heresia marinaceus is one strain we could, we we grow here. Um, it's a beautiful mushroom. We yeah. have yet to find out how good it can be for our brains. Possibly, you know, it ha- might have some positive effects on the prevention of, of Alzheimer's and dementia mm-hmm. uh, with its neuronal growth powers. So, yeah, I'm a full, firm believer in the fungal kingdom. I and love I'm it. excited you guys are here to shed light on this. And anybody out there, again, you know, check out michaellove.farm yeah. and getumbo.com for I some good it. products. Yeah, so best everyone, on the market. Everyone, check it out. Uh, one last, last thing. Do you have one play that you like? You, that you're like, that was my favorite play. I always love to ask guys that, like, if there's one play that they, you, the one play that maybe pops in your head at every random. I'll give you a play and then a throw. Okay. My favorite play, we, we'd ran it a lot in Denver. I would boot out to the left naked, and, and uh, Rod Smith, the X, would run, usually on the normal call, he'd run like a 20 yard comeback. He was basically going to clear it and then be there late if I needed a throw away, or sometimes he'd be wide open. We would run that, he'd run an 18 yard, and he'd sit and then go. And so I could still throw on the run. I could throw it as far as you needed, 45, 50 yards. We killed people with that play. Yeah. Killed them with that play. And I can't remember the full call. It was just X takeoff, you know, 34 naked left X takeoff. And he'd just run to 18 takeoff. Killed him with that one. My favorite throw was the skinny post. Just a glance or a bang eight, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it was just fun to throw. Because you were five quick steps, hit that back foot, and the trigger set. Yeah. And yeah. There was no... You had to read it. Sometimes you had to pull it back. But, man, letting that thing go in a game and whizzing by guys who are looking at you, but it's like it's already by them. And it's like that was one of my favorite throws. I love it. I also yeah. heard that you used to change. You used to call out plays at the line of scrimmage sometimes. You, like if you wanted to audible real quick, you would just say the name of the play. And you wouldn't even, like, disguise it. In 98, that's all we did. I called my whole offense from right, at the, right on the line of scrimmage. Damn. Yeah. We went no huddle. And I, in eight games, I threw for 2,500 yards. That was when we made the playoff run. Mark Tressman was the OC. Mm-hmm. Like, Coach, I can't just go. call the plays. He's like, those guys don't know any of those terms. By the time they figure it out, we're snapping the ball. Right, that's the thing. It's like yeah, you can, we you can no disguise the games. terminology, but the defense doesn't know your offensive play calls. Yeah. Well, so now like they do. You know, now they, yeah. you know, they know most of the terms. The guys study so much. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's uh, the game hasn't changed that much. Yeah, it's still violent. Yeah. It's still fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. it's still going to be there. In, you know, years to come. Mm-hmm. College game might not. I don't know. Depending on how they treat these athletes. And yeah, <laughs> with all this, you would have been an NIL king. Oh yeah. Made. Oh man. Well, maybe my last year. Yeah. Prior yeah. To that we didn't, we didn't do a whole lot. You yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, still like in Arizona. Jake what would have been great to be, What would have been great is to have the funds to then take my team and take them out to dinner or bring them over to the house God, and have you're like the gatherings. Yeah, you're just, so take care of my cats. <laughs> yeah. for, so, there were guys who had kids couldn't get shoes for their kids. You know, mm-hmm. like it would have been nice to have that to help my team. Sure. You know, that would have been a blessing for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Jake Plummer, one of the coolest guys we've ever interviewed. Yep. Thank right you. On. Everyone very, check out the website. Yeah. A very fun guy. Yeah. Yeah, man. There we go. Great nice. interview, you guys. Good thanks one. for being here at Michael <laughs> Love Farms. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jake. Jake Plummer is brought to you by Norton VPN. These days, you use your personal info to do just about everything, especially when you're online. With all that info just floating around out there, it can make the internet a practical gold mine for identity thieves. Stealing your identity, it turns out, can be dangerously easy. Now it's easy to help protect yourself with LifeLock by Norton. LifeLock monitors your info and alerts you to potentially identity threats. And if you're a victim of identity theft, 
A dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. Identity thieves have had it too easy for far too long. Now it's finally your turn. No one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions at all businesses, but everyone can save up to 25% off their first year by going to lifelock.com slash PMT. That's a great deal. Lifelock.com slash PMT for 25% off your first year. Lifelock. Identity theft protection starts here. Okay, we're going to wrap up with a Mount Rushmore. Uh, we're doing the Mount Rushmore of universally loved things. In word, R word, please. Yes, sorry. Mount Rushmore is on the hot seat mm -hmm. now. Big time. Uh, thank you to Jalen Rose for putting it on there. We've gotten tagged in a lot of tweets being like, what are you going to say to this? Um, probably just going to keep doing Mount Rushmore until football comes back. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to continue to grow as a person. And by that, I mean once enough people start telling me to stop using it, then mm -hmm. I will coward and tuck my tail between the legs. And then we'll just do top fours of yep. all time. Mm-hmm. Um, no, fuck it. I love Mount Rushmore yeah, too much. Yeah, I mean, Jake, who sent this to you? This was a, a AWL sent this one in. Thank yes, you. Let me Appreciate give them credit, that. Proper credit coming your way. Coming your way, right up. Congratulations to Camp. Congratulations, Camp. Congratulations. Bro, one five six. Okay, congratulations. 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 Really? You got proper credit. Billy is getting a universally loved thing right now. We don't. We don't know where he is or when he'll be back. But yeah, he's mm -hmm. getting the course light. He should be here at some point. Yeah, Billy's he's basically been like our pack mule on this trip, mm -hmm. where it's just like if we don't want somebody, to strap it to Billy's back. Yes, he also is probably going to come back with like two missing and be like, it was hot. They I needed a like, sip. Low key, like most of these six packs were missing some. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, whoa, whoa, Hank, be careful there. BFT. Oh, he's peeking. Hank's peeking. He's peeking. Dirty dog. All right, so yeah, we won. Dirty tricks after a bad, bad showing. Yeah, we won again. Playing great. Um, why don't we go first? And then, Hank, why don't you go second? And we'll give Jake and Billy just a couple more seconds of time yeah. to hopefully get Billy here. So, Jake, your list that you're about to unveil, is that just you or is it a collaboration list? I mean, I have my picks, I have his picks, so together we have a collab pick. But are you going to go with picked. your picks, or are you going to mix? We'll see how the draft goes. goes. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, all right. PFT, I sent you back. Uh, yeah, yeah. Our, I, yeah. I, like, I like this order. Yes. Okay. All right. Number one, one overall, very good pick, great pick indeed. Puppies, very good. Puppies dog. are universally loved. Jake, everyone loves. Jake them. loves puppies too. I had that as my one one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. A guy that's allergic. I had oh. the, I had dogs as one one. Hank that's tried to get us. Unreal. Hank tried to get us. It backfired. Yeah. yeah. Puppies are so universally loved that even people that will die from being in the same room as them still adore them. Yes. I also love whenever someone on Twitter like there'll be like a mass shooting or something. They'll be like, "Bad day. Like a lot of people got shot at work or school. Please send puppies." Yeah, like, well, okay, cool. That will fix that. May, if like an entire warehouse full of puppies got shot, maybe some stuff would actually change. Yeah, that's true. That is true. I think actually. Like probably, sadly. But, yes, no, it's very sadly, but also true. Yeah. But puppies, one, one. Billy's here. All right, Billy. Yes, Ooh, Billy. He's got the Coors Light. Billy, you didn't miss any picks. We did puppies, one, one, but you guys haven't picked yet. Thank you for grabbing this Coors Light, Billy. Yes, Billy. Thank you. Puppies, one, one. Hank, Team Hank. Hank got He had a meeting with uh, his right. team at lunch. Yep. They, yeah, they we face expanded. Face. Yeah, we got Aria and, and Jonah here for the week, great week. So, uh, you know, they were involved in the in the planning process as well. Uh, this that Aria's was one one is going to be like clapping back at people on Twitter. That was a, that was a, <laughs> I think Dogs was the one one. I think this is the obvious one too. Why did Billy just bring you Clear Eyes? You just brought that from the huh. store. Take a take a wild guess. Huh. <laughs> We're about to be at a meet and greet, meeting a lot of people. I mean, Big Cat's getting big nugs dropped off left and right. That guy was the best. I mean, um, he just like Big Cat. I want you to have my biggest nug. I'm just I'm just <laughs> I'm just foreshadowing, you know. Mm -hmm. Just just trying to stay ahead of the stay ahead of the curve. Uh, but our one our first pick is head, 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 head. Like Nancy Reagan, like getting your dick sucked or. Getting eaten out if you're a lady. Okay, mm -hmm. nice. Okay, everyone likes head. Yeah, hell yeah. Who doesn't? Yeah. Who doesn't? Good, good I, pick, I would, I, if, if there's someone that tweets me like, I hate head, like... You'll suck them off. No. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. prove to them. Yes. You, just, had, you yeah. just haven't had it from yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> Hank will, if you don't like a blowjob, Hank will suck your dick dry. Okay. Good pick, Hank. Thank you. You, yeah. you mean, I think you should specify, can I help you out? Getting head. Yeah, everybody likes not giving head. it. This yeah. is a right. situation right. like Thank you. Dana yes. got when he yes. proclaimed the himself chug. the king yeah. of blowjobs, and he didn't yeah. realize that when you call yourself the king of blowjobs, people could interpret it different ways. That, get, is, a, that is a good getting head. Getting head. Thing yes. for that. Yes. Getting head. Okay, here we go. Sleep. 
Sleep. Okay. Everybody loves sleep. Well, huh? not everyone. Not yeah. alphas. Not alpha pluses. No, people. Not Russell Wilson. Yeah. Likes to close their eyes at some point. Doesn't matter how long. Everyone likes to sleep at some point. Counterpoint. I don't necessarily like sleep. I like being well rested. Yeah, rested. I like being I like rested. the feeling after I sleep, but yeah. I don't know if I like actually like while I'm asleep because yeah. no I miss one, out on all sorts No one stuff. likes staying up all night and never being able to sleep. Okay. Right. Yeah. Everyone yeah. likes to sleep. What about right. people who have like dr- nightmares that torture them? Yeah, what if Freddy Krueger's around? Yeah, what if you just, well, you every time what? you close your eyes, it's the scariest thing in the world. Well, guess what? Sleep is, everyone needs it. Everyone likes it. Okay. Everyone at some point close their eyes and goes to sleep. All right. well, we poked some holes death. through it, but I don't think there are any holes. That's a good pick. Our next pick is going to be ice cream. Ooh, okay. yeah, everyone loves pick. ice cream. Yeah, that's a good pick. Just, mm-hmm. That's a great pick. It's a natural thing. I think uh-huh. you know, from from the time you're born till the time you die, you never get sick of ice cream. Uh huh. Ice cream is the best. Shout out the lactose intolerant people, but that's actually a proof to ice cream. I feel like lactose intolerant people still eat ice cream, and they're well, like, "I'll just be sick." They've made the ice cream for lactose intolerant people, yeah. and they don't even care that it doesn't taste anything like the real thing. They're just like, "Yeah, feed me that garbage." But, it's still close to ice cream. Yeah, but I, I, I guarantee you, like, there are people that reply to me tomorrow. They're like, "Yeah, I'm lactose intolerant, but I like, it's like a dog and chocolate. Like, mm-hmm. I'll just, I know it'll kill me, but I'll still eat it. That's how good it is." Uh this would have been my one one. I know there are some, you know, some oh. haters in this panel, but our second pick is vacations. Mm. Mm, good pick. We had it on the list. Yep. Yeah. Everyone likes them. Everyone loves them. Everyone likes going Again, on it's, vacations. It's, yeah. it's not when other people that you work with go on vacations, but going on one yourself, that's great. Yeah. That's good. Good pick. Good Thank pick. You. Thank you. Okay. Three. I, I actually disagree. Yeah. With your and then point. you, yeah, and then you go with number two. Yep. Maybe? Perfect. Okay. Perfect. All right. Great draft. Bro. Yep. I'm feeling really good about this. Really draft. good. Uh, our second pick, we're going to go with music. Mm-hmm. Everyone loves music. Yes. Now, it's not necessarily the same type of music. But music. But music. Music is it's universal. Like, imagine the world without music. Mm-hmm. Scary place. Yep. Music makes a movie great. Any type of music. Live music. Mm-hmm. It makes yeah. getting head better. Yep. Fact. So it makes vacation song. way better. Oh, yeah, good point. It's, Insane. You know like, what? It's a good thing enhancer. Yeah. It's all you, around. I actually don't think you can go on vacation if you don't have music. That's fair. Yeah. I like to put on... Three six mafia yep. and just lean back. Yep. All right. Um, Get your knobs lobbed. Yeah. We're gonna okay. wade into. That was a joke. <laughs> we're gonna wade into uh, some food, similar to ice cream, pizza. Mm. Pizza universally loved. Yep. Pizza makes the world go round. I don't show me a person who doesn't like pizza. They are a certified weirdo, psychopath, psychopath yep. like that. And pizza is also one of those things that you liked it when you were two years old, and you like it when you're ninety years old. Yeah. Pizza. Pizza. Pizza, pizza fever. Pizza. Catch it. Got any thoughts, Hank? Would you like to say anything about that? No, I love pizza. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. We just If we combined all these things, it'd be incredible. If you're just a great day. getting head from a puppy while eating pizza <laughs> on vacation, <laughs> well, listening I'll to I'll your do, favorite I'll, jams. I'll do you one. Oh, hey, actually, no, we're going to go into the human, the human side. Oh, where were we before? <laughs> well, the things... Food. Got it. Music. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're going with an individual. An individual. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Adam Sandler. Ooh, oh, that's a good pick. Good pick. Yeah, good choice. Good pick. That's a very good I like pick. that. Everyone does like Adam Sandler. Great yes. guy. Great movies. Yeah, yeah, Adam, there was even that phase great where people tried to come back on Adam. Yeah. People tried to clown on Adam Sandler and it like didn't take. You know, like, mm. oh, look at the shorts he's wearing. Everyone's like, dude, the fuck? It's Adam Sandler. Yeah, he's, like, just, he's just rich and doesn't care. Yeah, and he's like a universally loved guy and also seemingly nice to everyone. Mm, everyone. Yeah. Maybe too nice? That might, trying to hide? that might be trying to hide. That might be his would. That would devastate me. I'm going to add him to the list of, of celebrities that I would be like actually crumbled by yeah. if it came out that they were dickheads. Like Tom Hanks yeah. would be one of them. And then I always put Weird Al on there too because yeah. everyone likes Weird Al. Ellen. But, but yeah, Ellen. Oh my God. If that somebody said anything bad heart. about Ellen, just like slip my throat. Yeah, she's my queen. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a little back and forth here. Uh-oh. I, amongst there's the nothing ranks. better than than looking over and Billy looks as confident as ever and Jake's sh- shaking his head. <laughs> it's my favorite look in Team Mount Rushmore. Let's go, they got Billy. a good look. Yeah. Okay. So I don't think we all realized how much we all love this. That's until... why it's not going to play well on the graphic. No. Okay. Oh my, why why <laughs> would you say that, Jake? We literally. <laughs> no, we, the the, the intro would have been perfect. <laughs> but you just had to just <laughs> shit on it. Okay. All right. All right. Start <laughs> over. Start it was, over. It was, we'll pretend that didn't Jake happen. Jake Billy was giving a great intro. Yeah. 
So yeah, he was giving a great intro of. So a lot of people probably are going to disagree about this universally loved thing. <laughs> I want to like this. I just want to yeah, say for yeah. the record, Open I mind. want to like what Billy's Open about mind. to say. Open mind. You'll get so, our, our gut reaction. So something we all take for granted, but on this trip, we've lacked a little of, and it's a little harder to find than usual. Oxygen. Everyone okay, loves okay. oxygen, and no, especially no, hey, no, we've all no, been carrying stuff uh, around. Uh, the I thought, altitude, the I thinning thought you were air. Say friendship. I was like, that's no. sick, dude. Yeah, like this has no, been fun. oxygen. Everyone loves oxygen. If you didn't have oxygen, you would die. What and about a lot of us are slowly dying, carrying stuff, going upstairs, <laughs> the lack of oxygen. <laughs> and you guys may not get it, but guys behind the camera, they get it. Too. Aria, Aria did have a problem with oxygen yesterday. He was puking, yeah. and you know for what? The lack of it. Tomorrow, you guys are going to be like, "Wow, he was right." But You're Billy, not wrong about that, but it's not something that's loved. It's something that's taken for granted. Right. It's like breathing no, is. You don't think love. about breathing. I, I think oxygen. No. Do, you, do you love breathing? I think it's underrated. No. Do you want to? Yeah. Do you, do you I don't want think ice about cream breathing. as I much take, as you I, want to breathe? I, if I, I took you out to the to the water, if I took you out to the water and put you under the oh. water and then drowned you, and you got up and said, "You got to succeed as much as you want to breathe." And love ice cream. It'd be the same thing. Succeed as much as you want to breathe. Okay. Um, I love that, I love that Billy, counterpoint. You know that <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what about, classic. What about people all that... Time, all timer. What about getting choked out while you're boning, though? Like, that's depriving you of oxygen, but heightening the rest of your sentences. Bonk. Okay. <laughs> this is, listen, this is a bonk-free zone. It's Mount Rushmore. Things yeah. universally loved, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Last pick. It, it's not a bad pick. It's just, again, it's not something... It's a, I don't think anyone yeah. thinks, like, man, I love oxygen. Milo. <laughs> yeah. What? Milo. Milo, yeah. Man, I love oxygen. Man, I love oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there we go. Uh, our last pick is NFL Red Zone. Oh, okay. Ooh. Yeah. yeah well, it. what yeah, about the I, people listen, who... I do love NFL Red Zone, but there have been times on this podcast when somebody else has said mm -hmm. that... It Myself? takes away from the flow of yeah. Sunday. Oh, I yeah, personally disagree with that take. I love NFL I, Red Zone. I... I love NFL Red Zone. I would kill for but NFL I, Red I Zone. Do, there is something about sinking your teeth in a game, in a solo game, that's right. special. Mm -hmm. Sunday, 1 o'clock, you're playing yeah. Red Zone. Yeah. What about the people who don't like football? They don't listen to the then, show. Yeah. Yeah, fuck them. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Fuck them. Fuck them. All right. I, I would honestly, I would probably kill... Wait. I have a point of contention. Which Red Zone are you talking about? <laughs> This is very important. I could I could have No, prefaced. this is very important. What type of pizza are you talking about? Just pizza. cheese pizza. What type of music are you talking about? All music we what said. What type of puppies are you talking about? No, 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 no. All puppies. But are You're saying two Red different Zone. hosts. That's ridiculous. NFL Red Zone. I do not love Andrew Siciliano's Red Zone. Okay. But you love NFL Red Zone. I do love NFL Red Zone. I don't I like Andrew Siciliano. I don't he love him. I like under sells like everything. Not for myself anymore. I like okay. him. All right, all right. Red Zone. It's a good but, pick. It's a good pick. Yeah, it's a good pick. I was just trying to make you say something bad about Siciliano. Never. Yeah, I know. No, Hanson is a Syracuse guy too. They're all Syracuse guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're all okay. Good pick. That's a good pick. Red Zone is. It, 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 you, I'll tell you what. Red Zone's universally loved on this podcast in terms of listeners. Mm -hmm. There's not a person. It'd be very funny if we could find one person who heard that pick and was like, "What?" Is, what is he talking about? What's the red, red zone? zone? Yeah. All right, Hank. I'm shocked that uh, Team Billy and Jake didn't take this, considering the merch, considering you know what you're wearing. Uh, but our last pick is freedom. Mm. Mm. Okay. Freedom. Everyone loves freedom. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Uh, that's actually... I don't think a lot of people like freedom anymore. Well, Billy... <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a lot of people around here. <laughs> Billy's... Um, Fascist adjacent, so oh, he probably the, does where does that come from? It means like, where does that come from? It means that like you're not a fascist, but you admire a lot. Yeah, of right. That's you're like so they got some up. good ideas. Yeah, <laughs> you think that they're they're sweet. Yeah, the trains ran on time. That's so that kind of up. stuff. That is, not me. I, I, I love freedom. I, I love this country. Uh, and you know, good pick. I think anyone that doesn't have freedom probably wishes they did. What yeah. does freedom mean to you, Hank? Uh, it just means vacation, going to the beach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Getting ahead and not having to reciprocate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. America, baby. <laughs> uh, fucking love this country. <laughs> uh, okay, our last pick. Do you right. want to do it? Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna go with a person on yes. this one. You want to say it at the same time? Yes. Three, two, one. Scott, Scott Van, Van Pelt. Pelt. Everybody loves Scott Van Pelt. Everyone loves Scott Van Pelt. Say something bad about Scott Van Try. Pelt. I dare you. It, it's the same as the red zone thing, but it, it kind of. The, what about the people that don't? Yeah, no, watch you're right. Sports. You're right. I knew. But that's 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 yeah. You know, those people aren't listening to this podcast. I so. knew the minute I said that to Jake, I kind of put myself in a box. So I, that's why I backed off. 
Um, but yeah, because there are people who don't watch sports. I'll, I'll hand up. But I still think they'd like Scott. Yeah, Van Pelt, exactly. Though. I think that there are just there's no Scott. Anyone who's not a Scott Van Pelt fan just doesn't know who he is. There's just Scott Van Pelt fans in the waiting. You mm -hmm. know, I, he's universally loved. We'll see. I guess pizza, pizza and dog is going to be tough to overcome. Who's who does not like Scott Van Pelt? Show yourselves, Ryan cowards. Rusillo. <laughs> I'm, just kidding. I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't know. There's no. There's probably no. There probably is. That was not, based there, off what he told you. There probably is. <laughs> there probably are people at ESPN that are are jealous or uh -huh. like coworkers of his that aren't as successful as him. That see, I think he's gotten to stain towards him. I think he's gotten to a level where it's like we need Scott Van Pelt to pay our jobs. He's that type of like loved. Like Scott Van put, Pelt puts food on our table. I think I think there's probably some jealousy at that company because he is like so massive. But I think the respect that he has, like people are like, I'm jealous of him, but I realize that I'm just being jealous of yes. Scott Van Pelt. Yes. Um, okay, what did we miss? There's a lot that we uh, missed. Part of my cheesesteaks. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Pick. Universally loved. Shout out to everyone that's been getting them. Keep going to get them. Uh, um, they're delicious. Great, great reports so far. So mm -hmm. thank you to all the AWLs who have. Purchased. Yeah. So we we actually dug into the deep numbies on the cheesesteaks. And the uh, the complaints about them are down significantly compared to like any other brand new launch. So it's going really well. Now there have been a couple of issues. If there are issues, tweet at the support, and the support will we'll take tweet, care yeah. of all of you. I Venmoed some guy 150 bucks because oh, he complained so much, and then he he sent it back to me because we refunded him. So it was like he and he apologized. He's like, I'm sorry, I was going through some shit. I'm sorry, I, I replied to every single one of your tweets for three days straight. And I was like, cool, <laughs> that's fine. All right. I just wanted you to be happy. That's yeah. the You won't get that customer service anywhere else. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I, I'm doing spot checks on the quality too. I'm ordering them personally to myself. Uh -huh. and just to make, not because I like am a fat ass who loves cheese sticks, that's totally not why, but just to do quality check. I like that. Um, other things we missed, home runs. Everyone loves home runs. Yep. I mean, mm -hmm. chicks dig the long ball. That's the universal love thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Snow days. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, boobs. Boobs. Even women love boobs. Yep. Like women look at a naked woman. They're like, wow, she's gorgeous. Yeah. They yeah, like to look at each other's girls boobs. Girls that don't have boobs hate boobs. No. No. But I, no I, think oh, they, yeah. I think they love boobs. They're, they're just like, I wish I had boobs. Yeah. But then they inherently hate them. But like, you know, like when chicks like hang out, they just look at each other's boobs. Mm -hmm. That's all they do. We like also how had, we just hang out and name random players. They just look at each other's boobs. Mark Limke. <laughs> Mark Lemke, that's a good one. Yeah, I remember him. Dirt. Yes, of course. You do a lot of the Braves from, from oh, I the, love the, Terry Pendleton. Fat Terry ass. Pendleton, <laughs> uh, Jeff Blauser, yeah. Jeff Treadway, all the Jeffs. Uh, we had Mac and Cheese. Yep, Mac on and our Cheese. List. Everyone loves Mac and Cheese. Free money. I don't know even if that exists, but free money, you know. I mean, it, that is universally loved. Someone's like, here. I mean, those those always go crazy on, on Twitter when someone's like, I'm giving away free money. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the live tour. That's a that's a prime example of it. Yes, exactly. Free money. Exactly. Sunsets and sunrises. Ooh, mm, yeah, nice, beautiful. Uh, the other, the cool side of the pillow. Yeah. Who doesn't love that? Uh, taking a nice big clean shit. Mm. I think that's just because you have to do that. Right? Yeah, I do right have to now. shit. He's, well, my hotel room is not ready yet. <laughs> yeah, I, you can tell man. he's got to take a shit because he sent it. We went back and forth, and then he sent back. And was I was like, like, I really think that taking this nice really gonna, shit is going to I was like, play. what about the women? I was like, yeah, whatever. Uh, girls poop. Yeah, they yeah, sometimes. But those aren't big. Those are little tiny rabbit pellets. Uh, Tom Hanks, like I said earlier. Um, Pedophile. Kind of problematic. Yeah, yeah, yeah really know. problematic. Possibly Australia. Alleged. Uh, uh, yeah, locked up in Australia. <laughs> um, laughing. Just laughing. Everybody loves to laugh. Laugh. Friendship. Yeah. You know. Potable drinking water. Potable, mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's along potable the same lines of oxygen, water. although water kills probably millions of people. That's why I said potable drinking water. Potable, yeah. yeah. Potable, yeah. Um, let's see. Never what else do we have? Coors Light. Oh, Charles Coors Barkley. Light. Charles Light. Barkley. Everyone loves Charles. Charles is another one where like people have dipped their toe into trying to be like, don't listen to Charles Barkley. And everyone's like, uh, how about you shut up? Mm -hmm. And that's always like a universally loved person. Uh, new what sheets else? on a bed. What? So nice. New, new sheets, sheets on a bed, yeah. Climbing yep. to bed. I've recently become a, a, a second sheet guy. I'm growing up. What do you mean? Really? Like the, whatever, the cover. 
Oh. So, so wait, talk, like, talk me through your layers. You have the fitted sheet on bottom. I have a bu- fitted sheet and then the secondary sheet and then the comforter. I don't, oh, so do, the normal fa- I don't do secondary sheet. I hate it. I get I, all tangled up in it. Sometimes I just go only secondary sheet. Yeah, I, yeah, no I only go blanket because I just, I'm just i a violent sleeper. I feel like that was a big, big like, step up and in, in Yeah, that is. You started using adulthood. a sheet. <laughs> no, next, second sheet. Next yeah. step is to wash them. Yeah, no, I wash my sheets. I like how you call it the second sheet, but it's really just the first sheet. Yeah. No, the first sheet is the sheet. The fitted sheet on the bottom. That is the sheet. That's, That's a sheet, sheet one. That sheet one and sheet two is, is the sheet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I would say like 77 degrees and no clouds. Yeah. That's pretty universally loved. Not if you're from big time country. No, but I mean, that's still a day yeah. that you love. I it's mean, like, you want, you, right, you, you don't know. want 20 degrees in clouds. Well, yeah, in football weather, but I'm saying, like, if you just Get popped him, up, Jake. if you popped up a 77 degree <laughs> oh, the best. cloudless the day best. in the middle of, uh, like, in Columbus, Ohio in January, I don't think anyone would complain. Real feel? What? Real feel 77? Yeah, real feel. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thanks for checking. Because that's 77. Can yeah, get no, crazy. I, I yeah. got you. Humidity, yeah, there could be humidity. No, I'm saying real feel 77. Uh, Low Ray- humidity. Raymond. Yeah, maybe a Everyone. soft oh, breeze. Yeah. 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 Um, showers? I think showers. Showers, yeah. Good. I, in theory, like baths better, but who has the time? Right. No one has the time. Hot uh, tubs. Yeah, hot, hot tubs, tubs are great. Hot tubs, yeah. great oh my pick. God. hot tubs, great. We missed that. We whiffed on hot tubs. Yeah, hot tubs are great. Ice baths. Uh, okay, never mind. Uh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> Billy. <laughs> Gary V. <laughs> uh, all right. Andrew Tate. <laughs> <laughs> G. <laughs> Top G. Yeah. We gotta do All more right. push ups. Numbers. Numbers. Send everyone on their way. 30. 12. 30. So tune in Friday. Maybe an airport review coming your way. The third 16. ever. 26. Third ever. Madison, Indianapolis. And then the one that we're going to do for Friday. Yeah. yeah third ever. We'd speak a seven. We're I mean, averaging seven one every two years. That's pretty <laughs> good. It had to be more. But. Yeah. We're on a kind of a hot no, streak. It's not more. It's definitely not. We're on more. a hot streak with airport reviews. Yeah, two in a year. Yeah. Uh, this is the year of airport reviews. Say your numbers. Three. What's yours, Batgirl? Yeah. Two. Four, 44 for Jonah. 21. 21. I'm going to do 27. Everyone got them? 30. 76. <sighs> so close. I don't Shout want, out Philly Mays. I don't want to win on one of these. Yeah. Yeah, no, you can't win on one of these, Hank. It would be bad if you won mm-hmm. on one of these. People would call it Mickey Mouse Trophy. Love you guys. There's alligator eating pythons in the Everglades. That rocks. Cool. Really cool.